All right, good evening. My name is Kristen Eich. Um, I am the Code Enforcement Special Magistrate for the City of Deltona, um, and I am calling this Special Magistrate hearing of January 25th, 2023 to order. The first thing on the agenda is roll call, so I will have all of the Code Enforcement officers introduce themselves, if staff's ready. Um, Mark Gibson, Code Enforcement Supervisor. Myron San Miguel, Hearing Clerk. Daniel Ron, uh, Co-Compliance Supervisor. Richard Lovett, Code. Ron Paradise, uh, Community Services. Jeff Scott, Code Enforcement Officer. Taylor Zuko, Co-Compliance Officer. Mary Laracy, Co-Compliance Officer. Kristen Coulter, Co-Compliance Officer. Dennis Muse, Co-Compliance Officer. Tyler Rousseau, Co-Compliance Officer. Nelson Gavis, Code Compliance Officer. Todd B, Code Compliance Officer. All right. Um, we will go ahead and, and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Next on the agenda is my statement about how the hearings are going to run tonight. Um, forgive me, I'm going to read this so I don't forget anything. Um, we are here tonight because the city of Deltona has contended that there are violations of the Deltona city code that exist. This is a public hearing, which means that no general public comment will be accepted, but each of the respondents and the code enforcement officers here tonight and any witnesses each of you call will be able to present evidence to me regarding each case and the violations of the Deltona City Code that are being alleged. I am an attorney and appointed by the City Commission to render decisions in these code enforcement cases to determine if a violation of the City Code exists and what fine will be imposed, if any. If you are here for a Massey case, you might see that next to your uh, case number on the agenda. That means that I will be determining solely whether you have come into compliance in a timely manner in accordance with the previous order that the special magistrate issued in your case and will not be reopening the case to determine whether or not a violation exists. Uh, any decision I make this evening will be put into a written format in the form of an order. A copy of my written order will be provided to the city and then mailed to you as well. It is important to note that for any order I issue, you may appeal by sending a written notice of appeal to the circuit court within 30 days of the execution of my order pursuant to Florida statutes section 162.11. We go. The procedure of the hearings today will be governed by Chapter 162 Florida Statutes. Formal rules of evidence shall not apply, but fundamental due process shall be observed and shall govern the proceedings. Hearsay is admissible, but only to support other competent and substantial evidence. If you are a respondent, you will be able to testify. Tell me what you think I need to know about your case and present evidence and witnesses. Your testimony will be under oath, so I will be swearing you in, and this hearing is being recorded. For each case, I will call the case number and the city will proceed first. The city has the burden of proving that the code violation exists. Then you will be allowed to respond. I will take the cases in order that you signed in um, on a first come, first serve basis, although I do see a couple of families with children, so I am going to uh, take those cases first. Um, do I need to announce uh, the cases that have been withdrawn or continued so we, so we know? No. Okay. All right. Um, all right. I will go ahead and swear in everyone who intends to testify today as a group, which includes the code enforcement officers. So if you will stand, if you intend to talk to me, you want to go ahead and stand and take the oath. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please say I do. I do. Thank you. All right.
right, let me find my case here. Okay, I have 23, this is uh, case 23-004, um, property address 1507 Catalina Boulevard, and property owner is um, Aravarius Armstrong. Good evening. Thank you, Magistrate. Uh, my name is Marion Laracy. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a Code Compliance Officer. This is in case reference DEL 23-004, City of Deltona versus Armstrong Aravius. Property address is 1507 Catalina Boulevard, Deltona, Florida. Parcel ID is 810-900-00079. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1, which states that any owner, authorized agent who attends to construct, enlarge, <coughs> excuse me, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or structure, or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert, or replace any electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the installation of which is regulated by this code or to cause any such work to be done shall first make application to the building official and obtain the required permit. Corrective action for the, for the violation is to obtain a permit for the property that was cleared. Applications must be submitted to the City of Deltona. Statutory requirements uh, for notification of this hearing have been met. Notice of hearing and notice of violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property, uh, property appraiser's records. In addition to both notices posted at the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to Special Magistrate Clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. This was a um, case that began August 2022. Uh, the property was cleared, as you can see in the exhibits. Um, I verified that there was no permit um, in our system for this clearance of the property. Um, as of today, this is the first time I've met the property owner. There hasn't been any contact made by the property owner in the duration of my case. Uh, the city would like to request 14 days to, for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day to be imposed until the time is in, um, uh, is in uh, compliance. Okay, I, I have a question. Um, so you have cited this as a violation of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1, which relates to um, alteration or construction of a building or structure. So. I'm not quite understanding how clearing of property of trees would fall under that. Um, I ran it as a no permit case for the fact that I was not sure what the intentions were of the property owner. I was hoping that they would contact me. Um, so I don't know the intentions as far as if they're building, um, but there is a required permit to have the property cleared, whether it's to build on or just to clear and leave vacant. But does the city of Deltona have a land clearing permit? Yes. That is separate from a building permit? It is, if they're not planning on building on it. But like I said, I didn't, don't know what the intentions were as far as the property owners. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I, I'm going to dismiss this case. Um, I don't think that you, the, this is the correct citation. Um, I think if you are, there may be other uh, citations that could be utilized here, but this is not, you know, a violation of the Florida Building Code because we're not dealing with the structure or building. So I'm going to go ahead and dismiss this case. Okay. Um, I see the the property owner is here. If you'd like to say, I anything. would like to. Yes, so I'm going to give him my business card if that's okay, and hopefully sure. communicate with them and find out what the intentions are. Yeah, um, sir, did you want to come forward? So I dismiss the case, right. but if there's anything you need to tell me. I mean, honestly, no. I mean, I was, 
honestly, I was, I'm planning on building a home on it, but I was just trying to get ahead of the game. I didn't know, actually, I didn't know I needed a permit. Like, I got all the proper, like, surveying mm -hmm. of the land and got all that stuff done the proper way. And I was just trying to get a head start on it before I had the, con the contract to come and do everything, but um, that's about it. So I would recommend that you um, work with the officer here to right. get the required permit for land clearing right. because there may be, if you don't, there could be a case coming back to me again. Yeah. Obviously, I don't want that to happen for you. So work with her and figure out what you need to do on the, on the land clearing. And of course, once you start down the process of building your home, right. there'll be other built, you know, building permits right, that right, you'll need right. to get. Okay. Thank All right. You. Thank you, sir. The ne next case I have is 23-022, um, 1902 Stanton Street. My name is Todd Mead. I am employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be the case uh, number DL23022. The city of Deltona versus Lazar Ozanu. The property address is 902 Stanton Street, Deltona, Florida, 32738. The parcel ID number is 813-013. 130080. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5, adopting the latest edition of the International Property Maintenance Code Section 304.2, which states that all exterior services, including but not limited to doors, door and window frames, cornishes, porches, trim, balconies, decks and fences, and shall be kept in sound working condition and maintained in good repair. Exterior wood surfaces other than decay resistant wood shall be protected from the elements of decay by painting or other protective covering or treatment. Corrective action for said violation is to remove the wood, convert to, window, uh, convert to a window and close to a wall and or replace the balcony and obtain permits for required work. The statutory requirements for notification for this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code of violation were sent out certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's record. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to the hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. On May 9th, 2022, I received information in regards to boarded up windows on the occupied home. I first observed some boarded up windows on multiple sides of the home after making phone contact with the homeowner and discussing the case and the need to meet compliance. The homeowner was able to complete a majority of the work to complete compliance. The remaining issue in this case is a sliding door that is aborted across that had a balcony. I advised the homeowner to meet with the building department to get the best direction to meet code and safety compliance on this issue. The city would like to request 60 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $75 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Thank you. 
Did you have anything else? Well, I just want this, and this is the photo. This currently, that's the uh, situation of the sliding, which is the main, what's the outstanding issue on this uh, case. Mm -hmm. There was some boards across the lower half and a couple of uh, the previous, previous pictures. You'll see the homeowner did, uh, in, the, in the time when the notice of hearing was posted, that they were, uh, this, that was the current issue, what the house was when we, I first started the case. Those have been removed, but it's been brought to the attention to the building uh, director that there has to be either a balcony, a, a window, or put the wall up to basically enclose the thing because it's a safety uh, issue. Everything else is very good on the property. The owner has been uh, very compliant throughout the last couple months to get, get the, the work done to meet compliance, but this is just the issue is mainly a, a safety issue on the window or actually sliding, sliding doors it sits. Okay. Hang on one moment. Is the property appraiser's um, printout in, in the packet? Yes. -ish. I see it. To towards the back, I believe. Thank you. the affidavit of service, I see that it states that you posted the notice of hearing at the property. Is it also posted at the city hall? Yes, there's a doubt uh, in the lobby of the city hall. Is it a placard up on the wall that they're posted? It is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, is the respondent here? Yes. Okay. Would you like to come forward and You can both come up. Can you please state your name and address for the record? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Lazar, uh, and uh, I'm the. I apologize for my English. Uh, He's the owner of the house. I'm the owner of the house. Okay. Can my you name? speak into the microphone a little bit because it's hard to hear you? Um, I think uh, the window is, uh, we have uh, uh, window control devices and they comply with the building code. I don't know what else we have to do. Can I? May can, I? can you, can you show the, the... Yeah, we have a few pictures of, um, if you want... I need you to state your name in a... Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Volha Dmitrieva and um, I'm his wife. Okay. Okay. So uh, we have few um, pictures of the um, secure locks things, um, how, how they call Look like Window control device. Window control devices. Uh, that it was installed. Um, they have, you know, we put those um, thing because somebody from a building department told us block it. We wasn't sure how. And also, um, you know, so those things that you have on the pictures, they already install prior like together with the thing when we remove a uh, balcony. So these are basically, do these sound an alarm? No, 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 it's, it's a blocker. It doesn't let you open window. It doesn't let you open it. No, and there's a picture. It's um, not more than four inches you can open. So okay. it's inside of the house, so you cannot see it. Oh, I see. But, yeah. Basically, you can only open it for two inches. It's a special locker, yeah. And also, if um, needed, we can put metal bar because they told us to put the, you know, something that's why wooden item were put in. Like, uh, because uh, I guess it didn't work for the city, so. Okay. 
Да, а где вторая фотография? Give me a moment. Can you give it? Okay. Um, for the, where's the code enforcement officer? Can you come forward? Um, the, the, you're citing section 304.2 of the IPMC, correct? Yes. And that states that exterior surfaces, including but not limited to doors, door and window frames, cornices, porches, trim, balconies, decks, and fences shall be maintained in good condition. Um, so is it your contention that this is not in good condition? Yeah, because the, the board, the way the board sat, it was because of like fire, fire code to get in. I, I'm taking having trouble into, hearing you. Can you talk taking into the account all the all the the initially the each side of the house had boarded windows. Yeah. Uh, that was basically directed at the fire department. It's not allowed, basically not allowed access. Uh, and then in the sliding glass door, the, the, there was initially if in, in the previous pictures uh, there must have been a, a balcony there because there's a bit of a like uh, I guess rain has impressioned onto onto the siding, mm -hmm. so it was that the the boards that were basically just attached across were not basically al allowed to be like that. There had, mm -hmm. had to be a balcony from because we discussed right. I discussed this with our building director many times because I wanted to understand exactly how I had to let the homeowner know where they needed to go in directions of mm -hmm. so I could understand it as well. So the boards were not technically allowed. Uh, to be there because that's not the way the, uh, and it sort of does still prevent access into the home because if it's a slider door, but still they can't access the house through that way if there was fire. Yeah. Um, I, again, you know, I'm struggling with the, the section that was cited. I think it, it seems like initially that made sense. Um, because there were other issues here, but at this point, I'm not sure that stating that there's an issue with the exterior is is really, you know, the the correct code section. Okay, well, this, the outside we're dealing with the, was it because it has the outside of the house. That's the way where the window is. So that's where I was looking at sort of mm -hmm. affecting the. Um, is the is the building official isn't here? Is are they? So with uh, that being a original door, it would either have to have a porch or stairs going back out of it. That was to call by the building official. That's mm -hmm. why it's considered in disrepair okay. because it's an access point out with, but there's no stairwell, no place for anybody to fall if they do go out that door. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make my ruling on this one. Um, sorry. All right. I am, and your recommendation was 60 days, correct? Yeah. Yes. The, the 60 days, because if, if they had to, uh, we're going to replace, uh, either put a wall, build a balcony back, allow them the time to either uh, get plans or submit plans, and if they needed more time, we're, we're more than willing to allow them to do it. But it's just that we would like to see it addressed as soon as possible. They did every, everything else has been fine throughout the, the time that we've had this case going. Okay. Excuse me. May I say something? Yes. Um, also, gentlemen, I spoke to him on the phone or via email, and he told me he coming back to me with direction. 
and we have not received any directions. Instead, he, we just received paperwork from the court. Okay. So, uh, and we don't know, like I, I honestly tried to reach building department. Please leave your voicemail. We're gonna call you back. It's impossible to reach them. So I don't know if then uh, what we need to put there. Right, so I- And actually I wanted to ask if I need a permit for that. It's like, it's a lot of questions. And right, kind of and, and I think they've explained that you would need a permit for that. Um, so what is gonna happen is I'm, I am going to find a violation, but what I do is provide you with some additional time, in this case 60 days, to in order to come into compliance. Okay. So you do have time before any fine starts to run. So I would work with this gentleman, and, and I don't know if you can give her your contact information. You probably oh, have, have already. That's fine. And, yeah. um, and you can uh, work with them to get. But do I need to contact building department and get up a uh, perm permit <laughs> or? I'm sorry, he's not from building department, do I? No, but I think he can help direct you to the correct person. Okay. Yes. Ma'am, ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll interrupt real quick. I'll give you my card, you can get in touch with me, I'll get you with the building official, we'll get everything set up on what you gotta do. We'll answer, we got the answers for you. All right, so I'm going to find that respondents in this case are in violation of the city code as charged and that respondents correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on uh, March 27th of 2023. Uh, in the event the respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $75 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated stated date. The respondents, is for, respondents are further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. All right. All right, the next case that I have is 22-177. Uh, this would be 2123 Saxon Boulevard. Good evening. Okay, my name is Dennis Muse. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. Uh, this is a Massey case, uh, number DEL 22177, City of Deltona versus Expert, excuse me, Expert Car Care 3, uh, LLC. Property address 2123 Saxon Boulevard, Deltona, Florida 32725. The parcel ID number is 8023011200080. The statutory requirements for the notification of this hearing have been met by a notice of hearing and notice of vi code violation uh, were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address This with the property appraisal record. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to the, a hearing date. Uh, and a, an affidavit of uh, posting was also submitted. All the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the Special Magistrate Clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. Uh, it was ruled on uh, July 27th, uh, 2022, uh, the property owner was given 60 days to come into compliance with repairing the roof. The uh, owner did not come into compliance within those 60 days and has been receiving a fine of $100 a day since 9-25, uh, 2022. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $12,200 over 122 days. Uh, the city is requesting that the fine uh, continue at the uh, $100 per day. 
Uh, the city has decided to move forward with abating the property due to public nuisance becoming an Im immediate, immediate health and safety matter for the general public immediate concerns for the surrounding properties. Okay, um, so this case, this is a Massey case, um, and when did you say that the um, date of compliance was? Uh, date of compliance was, they, they right. had until the 25th of uh, September until get it corrected. So they were given, um, I think it was 60, 60 days to comply. Okay, so that was September 25th, would have been the 60th day? Yes. Okay, and these pictures are dated from today? Today. Correct? Yes. All right. Okay. Um, let me just check the notice. Um, I do have a question. Um, the property appraiser provides that the address is 1009 Hill Street, and I'm not seeing that that's where the notices were sent. No, I'm sorry, that, the, uh, that was the original office. Um, their office now, it, the owner's property is down in Lake Mary, and that's where that sh should have been sent. So, you, I'm, I'm not following. So the, you're saying that they have moved offices? and it's not updated on the property appraiser's website? No, it was not. I found out from the, uh, one of the uh, employees there at, at the business mm -hmm. uh, that the uh, owners actually lived in Lake Mary, and that's where the notices were sent. Okay. Are the uh, owners here today? Okay, all right. Um, Okay, and you mentioned the nuisance abatement, but you're not asking me to authorize that, correct? You're just asking me for an order of noncompliance. An order of noncompliance at this time for the roof. Right. Yes. Okay. All right, um, is the, the owner here? Would you like to come up and speak? My name is James Sada, and I'm the, one of the owners of the property. Okay. Um, Can you speak again? Yeah. I, it's really hard to hear. I'm sorry. All right, no problem. My name is James Sada. I'm one of the owners of the property. Um, so a couple things happened with this property. Back in the, when I first came here, we were, we were uh, notified of a violation because a truck, a semi-truck came in and hit our building. So what ended up happening was their insurance company paid for us to remove the violation, which was that the broken uh, canopy. So in that process of all that happening, we, the hurricanes hit just recently and it did more damage. I have copies of both claims that we filed for our insurance. There's two different claims that we've been in constant uh, repair mode and getting this approved. And we've tried to explain that to the last time that we have, we have not tried to not follow any compliance. We've been trying to do everything as according to plan. Um, so I have copies of, like I said, two, two insurance claims. I have, I have copies of the original uh, insurance and the repair that was done to remove the canopy that was broken. Um, and as you've seen in the pictures, there's you, I have actual structural 
report findings from a Florida licensed engineer uh, that actually shows the structural damage that's done to this building. It's not just a roof replacement. Um, it's actual, a, it's gonna be a lot larger process and that's why the insurance is taking a while. I have copies of all the structural damage. I have copies of everything that's in process and the original repair that itself of the canopy. So I don't feel, and I, we weren't getting notified. I just kept getting mail or this onto the, to the, the window as you see in that. I don't know if they're sending it to the right address or not sending it to the right address, but I have not received the, the, the things. But everything that we have done has been it, trying to fix it. And I have proof of all the claims and everything that's going in process. Mm -hmm. Well, but you are, your office is now in Lake Mary? Yes. Okay, and you did receive the notice because you're, you're here today, correct? Yeah, it was based off of, it was on the building. Not, not any other, not, it was not in the mail. Okay, well the mailing is actually to the Lake Mary address. I, okay. Um, all right, did you want me to see any of your documents sure. that you brought? Yeah, you can see all of them actually. Let me grab one. And do you have copies for the city? Sorry? Do you have copies for the city? Um, and actually, for the record, I am going to admit the case file as an exhibit, exhibit A. Do you have a copy of the case file for this gentleman? Uh, the only thing I have is what was given to me. What's that? The only, the only thing I have is what was given to me. Is what was given to you? Yes, as far as the case file. Right. Do you have a copy of what's in the screen case file for the gentleman? Yes. Um, okay. It would be mine, but. Can you please provide that to him? And are, are you all being, sorry, I wanna make sure that the code officer, you're able to review this as well. I pretty, I pretty much know this. You do, okay. Yes. All right, um, does the city have any response regarding the statement that there's, I, th I think what I'm gathering is that you're saying additional time is needed because of the extensive damage to the structure and not just the roof. Is that what you're yes, suggesting? Yes, I feel that we've been in doing everything we can to to go forward as soon as we were notified. But even prior to being notified, it was, a, it was an operating business. So we didn't want it to shut down. We've been in process the whole time with, with insurance claims. So, and uh, I don't I don't feel like we are ever doing anything in violation. It's just something that it's insurance is taking a long time. And then with the outstanding um, 
circumstances between a truck, a semi truck hitting our building and then the hurricanes, it was like, it was, it was, you might as well almost demolish a whole building and start over. So this is what the insurance companies are fighting out right now. Um, it's not up to us. We are, we've been doing, we've been following the process the whole entire time. Uh, just a couple things. Um, yes. First off, this case originally started back in February of last year. So they've had more than enough time to get their, you know, ducks in a row. Okay, if you look at this picture here, all the light that's coming on the right side is all sunlight coming down through the ceiling. So they've had more than enough time. You can look from the other picture from the outside of the building, showing the, uh, be the east side of the building. They've had enough time to get that covered up and kept covered up. In regards to hurricanes or anything, they had plenty of time after that to get it covered up. And they haven't done anything, they haven't even contacted me with any of this. Okay. All right, and the 60th day, remind me, was when? The 60th day was uh, September 25th of last year. All right, and it was $100 per day, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, all right, I'm gonna find that the notice was proper in this case and um, that, oh, sorry, before I do that, I'm gonna say, I'm just, I'm gonna admit this, if we can keep this into the record, since you've provided it, this will be exhibit B. Um, Uh, but I do find the notice was proper, and um, I am gonna find that the respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the special magistrate's prior order in this case, and the fine will be imposed as set forth in that order and will continue to run until the property is brought into compliance, and an affidavit, affidavit of compliance has been filed by the code inspector. Um, respondent shall notify the code inspector to verify compliance. Um, it appears there's been a long time to correct this and it's clear that the roof is not uh, in, in, good, in good repair. So I am gonna find that um, the violation is, uh, continues to exist and you're in non-compliance. Can I ask a question? I feel like that if we're not, if we're, if we're not being the ones that making the decision how long it takes. It takes, especially when the multiple hurricanes with South, Southwest Florida, it was taking a very long time for people to even come visit us, to even come look at us, adjusters for anything. It wasn't on us that we're not, we we're waiting. So everything that we have done, we want the business up and going as much as you guys do. Like we're not wanting the business to be down. So at this, I don't. I feel like finding finding a company or a local business that's trying their hardest to get things up and moving, I think is only hurting the situation. If you see that we're trying to do our best with insurance claims and everything, I understand that he thinks that it's ample enough time. But you, there's other variables. Mm -hmm. There's variables of people not showing up, people insurance uh, uh, adjusters, or them trying to deny claims. And this is just a big process, especially that this is a very unique one. I understand, uh, but the prior magistrate ordered when this was to come into compliance and the time to discuss what that date of compliance was going to be was at that prior hearing. So um, I'm gonna continue on with the rest of the cases. Thank you, sir. All right, 
The next case I have is 22-178. This is, um, oh, this is also the same. Yeah, so this is also expert car care um, in a Massey case uh, for 2123 Saxon Boulevard. Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, my name is Dennis Muse. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a co-compliance officer. This is Massey case number DEL 22178, the city of Deltona versus uh, Expert Car Care 3 LLC. The property address is 2123 Saxon Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32725. The parcel ID number is 802301120080. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by a notice of hearing and notice of code uh, violation sent certified mail to the property owner uh, at the address list with property appraisal record. And in addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to the hearing. Uh, an affidavit of posting was also um, submitted. Uh, all the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the Special Master Clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. Uh, it was ruled on uh, 727 2022 that the property owner had, was given 45 days to comply. The owner did not come in compliance with the, within those 45 days and have been receiving a fine of $200 a day since uh, 9 10 2022. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $27,400 over 137 days. And as you can see from the photos uh, from this morning, uh, nothing has been done with the property. Uh, and is, uh, has been brought back to any sort of current codes. The city is requesting that the fines continue at $200 per day. The city has decided to move forward with the abating of the property due to the public nuisance becoming an immediate health and safety matter for the general public and immediate concerns for the surrounding properties. And the only reason we're going with this one here is for total uh, 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 demolishing of the building only because it's become such a, uh, well, plainly stated eyesore. Uh, we've gotten numerous complaints on this property uh, for the way it looks. I understand they may have some issues with uh, lawyers and, and you know, uh, insurance companies, but being they've known about this from well, let's see, originally from February last year, and then uh, I think it was about June of this year, or last year, uh, for this to get corrected, or at least get it started to a point where it wasn't such an eyesore. But they have not done it. Uh, they, they did come in and get a permit for the canopy part of it uh, that was on the side that was damaged by the semi, but they have not done anything since then and this is what is not acceptable to the city. Okay, and this was cited as uh, section 37-10 public nuisance. Yes, ma'am. Um, and so 45 days would have been when? Uh, would have been September 10th of last year. Okay, and again, you're not asking me to order the building to be demolished. You're asking me to continue, find that it remains in noncompliance and that the fines continue. will be r running. Yes. Okay. Um, sir, did you want to uh, state anything for the record on this case? Yes, uh, this is the same situation with the canopy that we've already removed that you guys asked us to remove the first time. With the same process, we're still, we're still. I can't fast forward anything and move everyone to do it. I, I'm not a professional in that industry. I can only hire people. I can only use insurance companies. I can only be at their mercy. So again, I, if you, you guys can keep finding me and keep finding us, it's, I can't do anything to control it. I'm trying. We're just doing what we can to get it moving, and then this, this is really out of my control. So. Uh, we ask that you guys can understand that and see that, that we're trying to make it work. We've been, we've been here since 2004. Um, this is the first time we've ever had any problem mm -hmm. with, the, with, the, with, the, with the, uh, the city of Deltona, ever. 
so I feel like you know this is something that maybe we can work out with the fines because it's going to really hurt us pretty bad. And it's like we're not. It's not for a lack of trying. Um, for the code officer, um, you did you say that the notice of violation for this case was that issued in February of last year? Uh, this particular case is was uh, June of last year. June. Yeah. June. Okay. Yes. So it's been since June. Yes. All right. Um, Let me, and I think the notice is, is the same. It was to the Lake Mary address, which we've established is where the business is. So I find that the, the um, notice was sufficient. I'm going to enter the case file into the record. If you have a, a copy of the case file for this, um, for the gentleman, uh, I'd appreciate if you give it to him. Um, that's gonna be as an a, exhibit A. Um, I'm going to find that the respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the uh, special magistrate's prior order in this case, and the fine will be imposed as set forth in that order and will continue to run until the property is brought into compliance and an affidavit of compliance has been filed by the code inspector. Respondent shall notify the code inspector to verify compliance. Okay, I have case number 23-003. Let's see. This is also with expert car care, uh, but the property address is 1884 Elkham Boulevard. Yes, ma'am. So this is a different property. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, my name is Marion Laracy. I'm employed by the City of Daltona as Code Compliance Officer. This case is in reference to DEL 23-003, City of Daltona versus Expert Car Care. Property address is 1884 Elkham Boulevard, Daltona. Parcel ID is 813-015-150-300. This is a violation of City of Daltona Ordinance Section 110-501 which states if a use or structure is not expressly permitted in any classification, the enforcement official shall not permit such use or structure in the classification unless it is substantially similar to the use or structure otherwise permitted in the classification. The corrective action is to remove the U-Haul trucks and trailers from the property or apply for a proper zoning for storage. Statu statutory requirements uh, for this notification of hearing have been met. Notice of hearing and code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at the property at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. This was a proactive case that began June of 2022 when I noticed U-Haul vehicles parked in the right-of-way blocking the sidewalk. In my research, I learned that this property was not zoned to have the retail and rental business of U-Hauls, so I met with the manager and explained the circumstances and corrective actions. Vehicles were uh, immediate, immediately removed from the right-of-way. Uh, I did hand him the notice of violation referencing the zoning issues and recommended to contact the zoning department for assistance or remove the U-Hauls from the property and cease the rentals. At this time, the violation uh, remains. The city would like to request 14 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 of days, uh, a $50 a day um, fine to be imposed. I'm sorry, can you repeat that $50 and when was the recommendation for 14 time? days 14 yes okay can you um, explain a little bit more about why this use is not allowed what zoning district it is, is it in um, why is it not 
or, uh, why is it not uh, a permitted use in, in that zoning district? Uh, the what zone would you classify this as? Is it, a, I guess, a yeah, as you said, a rental um, truck business? Correct. Okay. It's not permitted on this, in this particular zone, in this okay. particular address. What is the zoning? Um, uh, uh, it's zone C1. C1, yes. Okay. Neighborhood commercial. And what are the, t the so the typical uses for neighborhood commercial, I, I assume, are? Yeah, they're neighborhood oriented, low intensity. Yeah. They do not permit, you know, storage and rental of trucks and trailers. Okay. <clears throat> Is there another zoning dis district that it could be allowed in? Yeah, we in the past have had uh, requests to rezone properties like this, engage in these type of activities to a C2 zoning, which is a general commercial zoning uh, category. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so I know that that's a quasi-judicial matter to rezone, um, but your recommended action is either to correct the violation, is either to remove the vehicles and, and cease operating or to request a rezone to that, C2? Th yes, that, that is an option. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, obviously, it would take far longer than 14 days, though, to accomplish that. Absolutely, and it require, you know, uh, up-to-date surveys and application fees and so forth. And, you know, of course, with any rezoning, there's a, you know, full public hearing process. Right. <clears throat> so uh, would that be approximately, would you say maybe 90 days? No, the, the rezoning of this, you know, depending on how long it takes them to secure a survey, which is kind of, you know, a lengthy time frame nowadays, uh, would probably take anywhere around nine months, I would imagine. Mm, okay. <clears throat> um, what is the city's position on, then on extending the time because I'm I'm concerned about putting a 14-day time limit if one of the options to come into compliance is to rezone and it would take significant amount of time. I, I'm going to go out on a limb on this. I don't want to override the officer here, but, you know, I think that they need to come in and talk to the Planning Development Services Department and probably others as soon as possible, mm -hmm. which, you know, that can happen you know, within a, a week at least. Right. And, you know, discuss the rezoning process and what's involved in that, and then move forward, you know, in a diligent manner to secure what they need to do to secure the uh, required submittal information for the rezone. I mean, again, I'm. Uh, if that's an option for him, I don't know how 14 days would sure. be adequate. So, um, are we stating that it would be a nine-month time period to come into compliance? I, I, or, I, I, or would I, you, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. I think benchmarking this, giving the the individual one month to actually make an application for a rezone, would be appropriate. <clears throat> Although submitting an application wouldn't bring him into compliance. It, it would not, no, but it would certainly, you know, demonstrate some movement in the, that direction. Yeah. Could, would you be in up to 30 days to apply? And if they apply, give them the nine-month extension in order to do it? I think that's reasonable. I was advised by uh, the gentleman I spoke to that they were just going to get rid of the get rid of the U-Hauls. So that's where the 14 days came into play. But 30 days, if they decide to want to rezone, I don't think that okay. that's well, unreasonable. Let's, let's hear from the gentleman. Um, what what is your intention with regard to the property? Are you intending to request a rezone, or would you you intend to remove the vehicles? Well, I wasn't sure of the plan of action and what was going to happen. I just have a couple questions. Um, 
in July this year, we'll be at 10 years doing the U-Haul there. So my question is what, <laughs> or what changed in the zoning that I wasn't aware of? And we've, we, like I said, we've been there almost 10 years. We've been doing it. And not only are we renting them, but we service them there. So we're, we're U-Haul in other locations. Still, Tona is not the only place that we're in. We're also in Orlando. We're also in South Florida. We're in different places that we, that we service U-Haul. So if there's U-Hauls there, they're going to be U-Hauls for oil changes, tires, brakes, trailer uh, bearings. Like it's just, it's just <clears throat> we're a full service plus we rent them out. But we've been also, like I said, we've been, I have the contract right here for you to show to, for, if you want, I can submit in that it shows that we've been in since July 29th of 2013, <clears throat> this specific location. Okay. Um, yeah, if you, if you want to, if that can be brought up to me. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, what, what is this document that I'm looking at? This is not a, I thought you said this is a contract. It shows the date of our initial contract is, uh, of a U-Haul. Okay, uh, but where did this document come from? From U-Haul. <coughs> okay, this is their, um, it basically, it's like you're affiliated in some way with U-Haul and you're able to go to the U-Haul website and see that you've been in no, that was them? actually sent by the, the uh, I guess, the supervisor in that area. Okay. I asked for a copy of the, the, what date we started that contract there. Okay. Um, so can the city, uh, and can you speak to whether or not there's been a zoning change? Um, since 2013 that has made this uh, no longer a, a, an allowed use or has it been not allowed since 2013? I believe this site's been zoned C1 since then. Okay. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> At this point, though, you would be able to move the vehicles to another location. It, really, what you have is, is it looks like some space in the building, and then you park the vehicles on the outside. Yes, correct. Like that trailer right there is in for service, but we already removed the U-Hauls as, as requested. We removed them until this hearing so that until we could get this figured out. But that one is there for service itself right now. So we have... Like I said, there will be U-Hauls there for service all the time. Okay. The difference is just renting them out and servicing them. Okay. And so can the code officer speak to you just, was this basically just noticed because of the parking that was going on in the right of way? Correct. Okay. And at that time you realized that this was not an allowed use in the zoning district. Correct. Yeah. And then I noticed. I noticed the rental key box at the front of the building and that um, gave me a flag that said they're, that they're renting out the vehicles, not just servicing them. Okay. Is servicing the vehicles allowed in, in the I mean, they're, zoning district? Their vehicle repair shop, um, I believe that should be fine. It's just the, uh, the violation of, of renting them out is the issue. Okay. Is that, did you want to add to that? Yeah, this this would be considered, this has been a long-standing automotive repair use, and this would be considered a non-conforming use within the C-1. If they wanted to bring it into conformity with the C-1, they would be confronted with having to go through the conditional use permitting process. 
Okay, so they could continue to service the vehicles. They, they can continue to service the vehicles, yes, y yes, Your Honor. Okay, and the only issue then that we have is the rental. That's, that, that's correct. Okay. <clears throat> and um, is it your contention that you've been renting the vehicles from this location since 2013? We've been renting and servicing the vehicles from that location since 2013. Since 2013. All right. Give me a moment. I'm going to take five minutes, um, so we're, we're going to recess for five minutes, and then we'll come back on. Adequate notice was not given in terms of the corrective action descriptions and everything are stating that he needs to remove all of the, um, the trucks from the property or apply for a proper zoning for storage. Um, but from what I'm gathering, it's not that he is storing it there because he has a non-conforming use mm -hmm. to service the vehicles and presumably incidental to that is some storage. The issue, it sounds to me, is more that um, he can't rent the vehicles from the location, if I'm understanding that correctly. Can that's correct. That's correct. So I, I think what I'm going to do is um, dismiss this case at this time, just again, because I don't think adequate notice of what was being required by the city was given in okay. this case. However, um, you know, again, that doesn't necessarily mean that you wouldn't, the city wouldn't be able to bring a different case, um, but I would encourage the gentleman to, uh, contact the code officer and work with the community's um, development department to determine if you're going to request for a rezone or how you're going to handle the issue of the rental. Um, otherwise, we might end up back here again. Is that clear enough? So I'm going to dismiss that case. Okay, thank you. That was. All right, this case is 23-006, uh, 2278 Howland Boulevard. <laughs> Just one moment. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you. My name is Marion Laracy. I'm employed by the City of Daltona as Code Compliance Officer. 
This case is in reference to DEL 23-006, City of Deltona versus Rivera Joseph M. Jr., Rivera Carmen. Property address is 2278 Howland Boulevard. Parcel ID number is 813-074-240-510. This is in violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 38-114, which states that the furniture outside must be designed to be placed outdoors or stored inside a covered structure. In addition, storage materials relating to residential use, children's play, toys, firewood, firewood, brush, logs, or any other material intended to be used in fireplaces or other permitted burning facilities shall be permitted only in the rear yard to the rear wall of the home. Corrective action must be properly stored in an enclosed garage or shed or removed, to the prop or removed from the property. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met. Notice of hearing, notice of violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at the property, on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case began um, in February 2022. I met with the resident, Jennifer. I discussed the violation and corrective action. In addition to the items out on the lawn and the side of the house, storing items in the carport is not permitted. Items must be stored in an enclosed garage or shed. I worked with the resident for several months due to the amount of construction on the roadway and her garbage not getting picked up, which I did verify with the waste pro um, that were several calls were made by the residents in reference to the trash not getting picked up. July, I noticed the property still in violation and I handed a notice of violation to Jennifer explaining the next course of action. The property is still in violation. The resident added a mesh tarp to the carport, but this does not comply with the violation. Uh, the city would like uh, to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $25 per day to be imposed until the property is in compliance. Okay, and you said you were working, or you had contacted Waste Pro, and that was that before you issued the notice of violation? Yes. Okay, and they are willing, obviously, I assume, to pick up the the debris. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, is the respondent here? Can come forward, sir. All right. Yes. All right. Yes. Um, can you state your name and address for the My record? My name is Joseph M. Rivera, Jr., 2278 Howland Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32738. Okay. Okay. Is there anything you want to uh, talk to me about with this case? Well, yeah. Um, you have pictures here from back February 22nd. Those violations were resolved because this young lady came by and cleared us of that. Of course, we had hurricanes and we had a problem with damaged property. So I inclined when I received this notice yesterday, her and her supervisor came to my house at my request because I wanted to know why the ordinance that they come that they cited me for doesn't comply with what has been done mm -hmm. one secondly i've never or ever or will have any materials of firewood of any kind i don't even have a fireplace uh, so why would i even store something like that the, it's cited here, here that the, the, the section says I'm hoarding firewood. I'm not. Toys were taken out and as of yesterday, they came by and they see that whatever was on this particular day uh, that they took this photo, which is 125. Uh, was that the day? Yes, 
that you were there? Um, these are photos from today, but I do have the pictures from when we met. Okay, whatever photos of the day, the garbage is outside. Mm -hmm. As I've explained to her, that there's only so much debris that SafePro would even pick up. They complain when it's too heavy. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to work and resolve that. I have photos as of today. If she says she got photos of the day, they don't comply with what is there unless she came in at five in the morning before this garbage was taken out. Are, um, yes, are the, the one, the pictures that are scrolling there all from today? That's all garbage. Yes. Right there. That was at 8.20 That's on the sidewalk as we speak now. Uh, again, I can't take out garbage the day before without getting sighted that I'm bringing debris out when it's not my pickup day. Mm -hmm. The pickup day is on the Thursday, but they could come in during the midnight to six in the morning, which they have at many occasions, or after. So it, it varies. They don't have a time set. So I always put out my garbage or whatever I have to throw out the Wednesday before. Mm -hmm. So that has been done today. And I have pictures of if the front of the driveway or the drive port and the front of the door, none of that is complying with what we see here. So you, you could take a look at that. You have additional pictures? Yes. Okay, they're on your phone? Mm-hmm. Um, I have no way of, I, I'm not computer minded, so I don't know how to send it to you. Uh, um, if she does, uh, she's more than welcome to look or bring it up to you. Here's the... Uh, is it possible for you to um, to email it? I don't know how to do that. I, I All I know is I'll receive a phone call and make a phone call. Mm -hmm. I, I could take a picture and put it on the phone, but okay. I am not computer minded. We'll have to have some way of keeping it in the record. Well. If she could take a look at the phone and transfer it to you or to our website or to the site for her supervisor, I don't know. But the supervisor here was also with her yesterday. Now, I have nothing to hide. I got hit with uh, Ian and uh, Nicole, and I have a lot of damage and work to do in the backyard but that's not what we're complying with this. Mm -hmm. This is only the front entrance in the carport, mm -hmm. which has been done. Um, so I'm confused with the initial order that they gave us saying that we have furniture, which the only furniture I had outside was a patio furniture with an umbrella, a table, and, and chairs. We took that out and put it away. Although the supervisor says, no, that was fine. But we took it out anyway, so there's no question that there was any kind of furniture in the front, which doesn't exist. And that's on the picture too. So okay. I have three pictures that they, you can review, supervisor, she can review, or they can come tomorrow morning and take a look at it. I mean, I asked them to come you know, or they volunteered to come and I didn't neg negate any reason why they shouldn't if I hadn't complied. So, um, and they agreed that they want to give me 30 days more. I would like 60 because if I'm using Waste Pro to get rid of what I have, it's going to take me at least six to eight more pickups. And, and that's how, I, I, I'm on Social Security. I can't afford to order a tractor trailer or uh, some kind of uh, device to haul away stuff because I'm on unlimited income. So, so I have to depend on Waste Pro to be able to take away what I have to put away. Okay, a couple questions. Um, just to be clear about what we're, what um, items we're talking about in the photos, mm -hmm. uh, like you mentioned, there is a 
screen of some kind that's wrapped around the front of the house? That's gone. That's, that's not even there anymore. You can okay. see it right here. I, I, I told them yesterday I was taking that down. Okay, so are there items beyond, behind what is showing? No, the, behind that top, the top is not there, and the only items are which they okay. claim I can have is a, a few storage bins against the wall as long as they need. Okay, I'd like, I want to hear from the code officer for a second, sir. So are there items behind the screen that you believe need to be removed? When we were out there yesterday, there were quite a few items, more than what you would see near, next to the trash bin behind that screen. Um, and what you're seeing at the trash, that's definitely not even a, a, a tenth of what was behind that screen on the carport when we were out there yesterday. So he does have significant amount, and there's quite a bit in the backyard as well. Um, so it's going to take quite a bit of time for him to have that cleaned up. Mm -hmm. He's... This, th those pictures were as of this morning, so I don't know if that screen is down. It could very well be, I don't know. But um, he's definitely going to need some time to take the, get, you know, clean up the property. And can, and you can make individual trips, correct, to... She can come as many the, times as she wishes. I did yeah. enter in a, um, a request for Waste Pro to ensure that the items that are placed in the curb tonight get picked up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But I'm, so, I'm saying can he can individually go to the, you know, the dump essentially. I'm Absolutely. not sure what you want to call it, but Absolutely. yeah, he, he can he can take things individually to 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 there. Is there Absolutely. A, a fee when you go? I don't know if there's a. I'm sure there is, but I don't know what it is. Depend on where he is, but I'm sure there is a small fee to take to a transfer dump. So there is a small fee if he wants to take it himself over to the dump. Okay. If I wanted to take something to, I I would have to rent a truck. I don't have an income to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. That's why I, ex, I I would like the extension of, even though they were kind enough to say we'll give you 30 days more, but I would need more than 30 days to be able to get rid of what I have. And what do you believe is a reasonable time, sir? I, I would say 60 days. 60 days? That would, you know, give me six, well, t tomorrow's one day, one day, so I'll have seven more pickups after that. Mm -hmm. By that time, as long as Waste Pro gets a word from them saying you must pick up whatever they put out, I would have no problem, mm -hmm. which... Is the city amenable to a 60-day? City is, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, give me just a moment. Now, uh, on the matter of pictures, I, I'm inclined to give you the 60 days. Do you still want me to view the pictures? Because if so, well, we have to figure out a way for, to get that into the record. Well, to view the pictures dating back to February doesn't exist because that doesn't exist as we talk now. Mm -hmm. That's why I got pictures of what they did not see yesterday. Right. Well, but she's provided me pictures with pictures of today. So if you have pictures Which, of today that yes. you would like me to see, then I we need to figure out a way to get to, them into the record. Them, I wouldn't know how to do that again. I'm not computer minded to be able if there's a person here that can email them to you I'll give you my phone and you do it for me. I mean, do I have to pay you Is that to do that? I mean, I don't know. I have no idea how. Ma'am, there's not a way for him to admit this evening at this time. He can send them in via email to the officer. We can admit those into the case after the fact. To, I can go back home and have my daughter email you the pictures if you like. All right. Because she's more computer minded than I am. All right, if you want me to view the pictures, then um, do you, will you bring the phone up? Please. <clears throat> and what was the time you gave to comply in the notice of violation? Um, when we were out there yesterday, we had all agreed on 30 days. 
But I mean, in the original notice of violation, did you oh. give him a time to? Oh, absolutely. Um, Showing the area that you were uh, citing me on. Um, there is, I can't even. There's a bag of few scrolling. items that are still in the middle, which. Well, it's stuck on the same photo. Okay, hold on, I got it. All right, well, I don't see any date or time stamp on this um, to tell me when these are from. I just took them before I came in. Okay, well, I still see that there's items uh, in, in the yard. Um, so I am, if you can give the phone back to and I'd like you to please um, email those to uh, some, if you can speak with the officer about how to do that to make sure that they get into the record. Sure. Um, you said you wanted to know moment. the date that I gave him of compliance on the notice of violation? Yeah. The compliance yes. date was July 27, 2022. Okay. All right, so that's been a significant amount of time. Yes, ma'am. Case began in February. Okay. Okay, so oh. photos, just email them to you. This is mine. I'll take them. I'll, I'll send them both you. Whatever's easier for you. Okay. Oh, and my daughter's son. Okay. Because she knows okay. how to do that. Okay. Um, I'm going to um, admit the case file here as a exhibit A. Like I said, um, I'm inclined to find, to give the 60 days. Um, and I find that the notice was adequate in this case, so I'm gonna go ahead and make my ruling. Um, I, I find respondent in this case is in violation of the city code as charged, and that respondent would correct the violation before four o'clock p.m on, and we gave, let's see, 60 days would be March 27th of 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by this date, a fine in the amount of, I think the recommendation was 30. $25, $25. recommendation. $25 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So sir, you will have 60 days to, okay. um, to clean up the property and make sure that you stay in contact with um, the code officer so she can verify that you've complied within that time so that the fine doesn't begin to run. Sure. Okay. Uh, now, if it's the, before the 60 days, everything is done, then I can just have them come over yeah, they'll, and verify that. Yes, they'll verify it, and they'll, I assume you'll um, write a notice of, um, uh, affidavit of compliance at that time. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So they will write something that says you have come into compliance um, within that 60 days if you, if you do so. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, the next case I have is uh, 23-051, which is um, 3015 India Boulevard. Good afternoon. My name is Tyler Russo. I am employed by the city of Veltona as a co-compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23-051, the city of Deltona versus Elizabeth Velsquez. I wanna make a quick disclaimer too. Um, on the uh, front of the exhibits, the name is incorrect. It's just on the, the that case specific, but everything else is correct. So it does say bridge SFT, that's actually Elizabeth Velsquez. Just a typo error. Okay. So, okay. The property address is 3015 India Boulevard. The parcel ID number is 813-041-580-010. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 38-114, which states that furniture outside must be designed to be placed outdoors or stored inside a covered structure. In addition, storage of materials relating to residential use, children's play, toys, firewood, brush, logs, or any other material intended to be used in fireplaces or other permitted burning facilities shall be permitted only in the rear yard or to the rear wall of the home. The corrective action for said violation is must be properly stored or removed from the property. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and have submitted to the Special Magistrate Clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. On November 17, 2022, this case was opened up due to a complaint about accumulated items built up in the backyard of the property. I myself have observed a few items such as an empty jacuzzi, some built up fencing, tree logs, and other small miscellaneous items left out in the backyard. I have attempted to make contact with the property owner through knocking on the door multiple times and I have never been able to get in touch with anyone. Since posting the notice of hearing and going to check back on the property today, there has been small improvements on some outdoor storage items getting removed other than the fencing material leaned up against the shed and the tree logs in the back corner of the yard. The city would like to request 10 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Um, can you repeat the last part? The yes, ma'am. Um, the city would like to request 10 days for the property to come in compliance or a fine of $50 per day to be imposed. Okay. And so these pictures that are scrolling are from, no, that one is older. Yeah, these are, these are the older photos. Okay. Can I see the ones from today? <laughs> So the picture's kind of hard because of the shadowing, um, but the shed on the right side of the screen, just to the left of it, there's some black fencing that um, I'm guessing just hasn't been put up yet. And then just to the right of the RV, which is also hard to see, there's tree logs in the, uh, the backyard there. Okay. I see, the, yes. Okay, so the issue that, so they have, cleaned up some items in the back. Correct. The issue is the fencing and the logs that remain? Yes, ma'am. Give me a moment. All right, so in order to come to com into compliance, they could move the items against the rear wall of the home. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay. Um, what is the reasoning for $50 with only a couple of items remaining? That was just a suggested amount that I believe would be fit if it's, if it's too much, I could go with lower and go to $25 per day. Okay. All right, let me look at the case file for a moment.
um, what was the date you gave again for them to come into compliance? 10 days. Um, no, in the original notice of violation. Oh, I'm sorry. What was the reasonable time you gave to comply? Just give me one second. So the NOV was posted on November 26th, and then it was 10 days to comply after that. Okay. All right, is the respondent here? Yes. Okay, would you like to come forward? Um, I am gonna admit the case file into the record. Do you have a copy for the property owner? Um, I do not believe I do. Okay. I said, do you have a copy of the case file for the property owner? The property owner has the copy of the case file already. They were given to them when they walked in tonight. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. All right, ma'am, can you state for your, uh, for the record, your name and address? My name is Elizabeth Velasquez, and I live at 3015 Indy Boulevard. Or oh, the, the residence is, that he's speaking about is um, 3015 Indy Boulevard here in Deltona. Okay. Yes. Well, um, I've complied with everything they've asked. I mean, I had to put a few things out there because I didn't have where to put them, but I was also waiting for some people to help me pick it out because it needed, um, and it, like for instance, I had, a t I had a TV, I had a refrigerator out there, but they were gonna come and um, haul it. Mm -hmm. They didn't come on due time. So I rented, a, I had to rent a U-Haul as well from the same company the gentleman was here, the, you know, from Elka. The thing is, I moved the, I moved the fridge. The, it was, you know, the fridge was good, it was removed. It was a couple of days after the storm that I put it out there. It even got rained on. Okay, so I removed that. But what he's talking about is my logs, and my <coughs> logs are important to me because I like gardening. So, I want these logs. He's saying to put it like on the side of the house. They're in be between bushes. <clears throat> now I removed them from where they are because, and I put them a little closer to inside the yard. I want my flowers on those um, logs. I don't have a fireplace. I don't have no use for, for firewood, but they are useful for plants. Mm -hmm. And I want them for my plants. And then the other thing is that, what else was it? And I have the new pictures. The ones that he can't see through the back when he went today, I have the, the pictures right here. And where the logs I put them, and, it, and then I had a tub there. I've had this project about a, a jacuzzi for, for the longest. I've been 36 years here in, in, in Deltona, and, I, and that jacuzzi's been out there maybe 15. Always trying to get it done, you know, uh, relying on help, relying on plumbers, <coughs> relying on family, never got it done. The storm comes, it's still in the, it was still in the same place. My fence, I bought a used fence because I can't afford uh, all these white fences and I don't want them anyway. Um, and I have that fence there that's gonna be put up. It doesn't bother nobody. It's against the shed in between the orange tree and the avocado tree. So now I had to get rid of the, the hot tub because <coughs> they don't want it in the yard. I mean. I enjoy my yard. My yard has no, no garbage. You know, I took care of all the debris from the storm. The utility company came and uh, there was a Bungum Villa all the way up to the, up to the court. The storm brushed it. They came and cut it, but I had to pick it up. Bungum Villas have a lot of thorns. So I had to clean that up. So at this time, he, I think the officer is stating that the only issues that are remaining are the fence and the logs, correct? Yes, ma'am. With regard to the logs, are you, are you, I, I want to make sure I understand, mm -hmm. are you putting them like around a flower bed or what well, is it that you're using they, them for? Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you. Um, let's see if you can see it from that. Okay, you see the shed? To the left? Yes. That's where I have the fence. There's two trees there. There's an orange tree and an avocado tree there. And then 
all the way to the back there. You see the logs right there on the floor right there? Yes. They're rolled over like that. Just rolled over. Here's the picture. I don't know. I can see them. Okay, you can see them. So I rolled them over and I strained it. There's two logs. Mm -hmm. And eventually they're going to rot. And they're huge logs. Uh, logs. They're not like little tree, you know. They're huge logs. Right. And so you make holes in them and you put your orchids in there. Okay. Um. The fence? I really don't know where to put it if it's not there. Okay, well, the code requires that both the logs and the fence be moved to along the, along the wall. Along the wall to the of house? Of your house. That's what the code requires. To the backyard of the house? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, um, I mean, I can't even stand them up over here in the front so, they could, so I could put my plants on top of them? Oh, because you're saying that the law is requiring yes. um, yes. that. Okay. The, the, co the, the city's law requires that the logs and the fence be okay. moved along the rear of your, of your Back house. Back of the house. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. How long do you think it would take you to move those items? Well, I, I would appreciate the 10 days. The 10 days? Yeah, I would appreciate okay. that. All right. The fence, you want me to move the fence too? Yes, the logs and the fence. Yeah, logs mm -hmm. and fence. Um, so, uh, so I I'm try to put the fence inside the um, the storage. I'm mean, the storage. The oh, shed. and I I think that I assume that would be an adequate. Yeah, that would be adequate. Yes, I'm gonna try to. I'm yes, really so that would be acceptable as well if you okay. are able to put it inside the shed. Okay. okay. All right. Yes. So um, I'm I find that. Um, the notice was adequate in this case. I'm going to admit the case file here as Exhibit A. Um, and um, I do think $50 is a little bit steep for this. Um, I am, I, I do take into consideration any actions that are taken by the property owner to correct the violations along the way, and I see that you have made some no, progress. Yeah. So um, I am going to do the 10 days, but I'm going to reduce it to $25 if you don't comply within that of course. 10 days. Yes. Uh, so let me go ahead and make my ruling. All right. Um, I find that respondent in this case is in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on, let me see, that would be February 4th. Mm. Uh, that's 10 days. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So as soon as you move the items, please make sure you contact the code inspector so he can verify that you've come into compliance within the 10 days. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. That's your card? Okay, just give me a call. If you have any questions, as well, you can call. Thank you. Yes, thank you. The next case I have is 23-001, 2196 Howland Boulevard. My name is Mary Laracy. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as Code Compliance Officer. This case will, is in reference to DL, DL 23-001, City of Deltona versus Circle K Stores, Inc. 
uh, care of real estate department. Property address is 2196 Howland Boulevard, Deltona, Florida. Parcel ID is 811-401-000-030. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code Section 105.1, which states that any owner, authorized agent who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or structure, or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert, or replace any electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system the installation of which is re regulated by this code, or to cause any such work to be done, shall, shall, shall first make application to the building official and obtain the required permit. Corrective action for this violation is to obtain a permit for the entry door replacement. Statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met. Notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property appraisers. In addition, both notices were, uh, were posted on the property at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the Special Magistrate Clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of, the, uh, of what I observed the day they were taken. Um, this was a reactive case that began on February 2022. I had received a fire inspection report from the City of Deltona Fire Inspector, which is the Exhibit 1. But if you look at Paragraph 2, um, deficiency, this case is regarding a front door entrance exit door that was originally approved to be an automatic sliding doors, but was changed and appears to be permanently closed without a permit. Uh, this was due to a small kitchen that was installed. The kitchen is permitted. Um, it should be Exhibit 5. You'll see the kitchen. The initial inspection was completed on June 2021, and again, several inspections following by the fire inspector. As of February 2022, the permit for the door changeout was applied for and only partial fees paid. As of today, the permit re uh, remains under review, has been denied several times by the fire inspector and building official, and contact by the company or representative has not been made in reference to correcting the violation. Um, I was advised today, this afternoon, that they came in and attempted to correct whatever needed to be done on the application uh, for the permit. Um, the, sorry, the city would like to request 60 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 a day to be imposed until the property has been notif notified us of compliance. Okay. Um, all right, so you, there was a kitchen that was installed in this Correct. area, and now the door is permanently closed. There used closed. to be a door there. They installed a kitchen with a permit, um, and they uh, secured the doors closed somehow, changed them from sliding um, and uh, sealed them closed without so, a permit. But that change wasn't included in the per permit for the no, kitchen? It's a separate per it was a separate part of the permit. Should okay. have been a separate permit. Which it required there was, a separate there is permit? one, yes. And they had applied for it, but um, it was denied continuously. Okay. It has not been corrected. Is it... Well, my question is if, if I'm asking them to come into compliance by getting a, um, a permit or, and it's been denied multiple, t multiple times, is, that, is it possible for it to be granted <laughs> the permit or is there a, you know, something that, that um, is going to prevent you from, from issuing a permit that is completely filled out? Does that question make sense? Do you, they, they can get a permit? They can? Um, yes. Okay. Okay. So at this point, it's because it just, the permit hasn't been properly paid for and filled out correctly? They started, the, they completed the work without a permit, and they just applied for the permit in February. They were missing some pages to it. To the permit application? Okay. All right. Let me look at the case file for a moment.
are they going to have to have the doors open again or no? No, they don't have to have them opened again. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, is the uh, respondent here? Yes? All right, would you like to come forward and speak to this item? My name is Mike Tennyson. I'm a construction project manager for Circle K. Uh, my address is 109 Webster Lane, Palm Coast, Florida. Okay. I was given this case last week. I uh, came to our real estate department, and first I'd like to apologize for even having to be here tonight. Uh, it's not something that our company is known for, not being responsive to notifications. I looked into it a little bit. <clears throat> no excuse for anything. I'm not offering any excuse, which is take care of it. But as I, as I was looking through the file, and even if you look at note one, page one on the detailed report, it, it says that we did apply for a permit, and if you notice, it expired. And I said, it's not usually what we do. When we go for a permit, we go ahead and get the permit, and what's going on? And I talked to a person who was more familiar with this, uh, and they said that the contractor was supposed to handle it died last summer. Mm -hmm. And then that person who was our territory service manager who handles this work and initiated it was transferred out. So it, it just went through the cracks. And I was assigned this last week. So what I did is I met with code enforcement last week. Uh, I hired a GC locally here in, in uh, Deltona, uh, L&D Construction. L&D Construction spent twice already with the building department. Okay. Uh, I have already the uh, signed by our vice president notarized permit application and the notice of commencement. And um, he tried to get the permit today. And I would like to just admit this because it shows that we have started it, but they, they needed a larger copy of one of the details of the door. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I would like to say that I would like a point of clarification because <clears throat> this, door, this door actually, what, what I read in here was there was an automatic door that was replaced with a, uh, just a regular commercial entry door without a permit. And, and there's no contesting on our part of any of the facts. These, we accept all the facts as written. But there's two entry, there was two entry doors out front, and when I visited the store, there's another one that's not shown in this picture, uh, and it, it's, that doesn't look like an automatic door to me. Uh, you, you can see on either side, it's solid. I think there's another door that's not shown in this picture that, that was an automatic door, because the store staff told me the door to the right of this one was an automatic door and it was replaced. And I, and I believe that that's the one that there was no permit for. I think from what I've read, that was permitted as a kitchen, which should have been in there. I saw the detailed drawing from MDM, the architect, which specified how that should be handled. There you go, move your cursor there down to the left, straight down. That right there, right, right there. That was an automatic door that was replaced with that door right there, and no permit was obtained, and it should have. That's structural. And, and so, I'm, I'm, so I'm looking at this, uh, note one on, on page one, uh, I read that as, you know, there needs to be, someone came in and get a permit, which I'm guessing uh, was our GC, and he, he died, like I think it was in July of last year, July or August, but, but there's no excuse. We should have caught that, but it's tying up the loose ends. TSM should have handled it, should have had a permit before the work was initiated. I did, I was able to get a hold of the gentleman who did that work uh, to find out what the costs were and get the contract that he had, and he stayed in there, he does not pull permits. So we should have had a GC who hired him as a sub, pulled a permit, and I, this right here, this date would have been after the fact. So we may have already received a notice of violation that the permit had not been pulled. So it should have been handled last year, and I'm here to handle it now. And I think, I think that um, we'll, have it, we'll have a permit probably application in tomorrow. He came by today to get one, and, and, and it's the paperwork of the permit's all done. They wanted a bigger uh, detail of the door specifications. 
Uh, so once, once he has that, he'll be back tomorrow and resubmit for the application. Uh, okay. So, so, so I'm, I'm now confused. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so me. can, and that's, you know, because we want to make sure that you know what needs to be done in order mm -hmm. to correct the violation. So is it that, which door am I looking at? Because I think the gentleman saying that the door on the right hand side mm -hmm. of this picture is the one that was automatic and that was replaced without a permit. Correct. But you are, the pictures are focusing on the doors to the left, which don't open and were never automatic. So what is it that you're asking him to do in terms of a correction? Well, as of the, per the fire inspection report and the pictures, it indicates that these doors that were closed. Which that, doors? That's what I'm going off of. Is the, the doors the, that have the black. The ones that are closed, yes. That's the report that, I'm, that I received from the fire inspector. And that's true. Now, whether that was permitted or not, I don't know. I, I was told it was the automatic door. And that's, I think that was on the complaint. That's not an automatic door, but the one to the right is. It could be we have two violations here. I, I don't know, but what, I, what yeah. I'm handling is the automatic door to the right. Okay. And that's what I was told the complaint was for. Okay. Um. But I saw that I saw I saw the documents there in your package from MDM, who's our architect, calling out the wall and the fix for the closed door. So there's something that was submitted that could have been the permit from last year that was submitted that expired. There it is, right it's there. Exhibit six. Yeah. So it looks like some effort was made to to get the permit for that work right there, and then that that expired. And but we're also. Maybe we need to get two permits. So that one and then the other door, because the automatic door, which is what I read here in the complaint, is the second door. Okay. And exhibit five is the picture that um, I received from the fire inspection okay. report. So it could so. be we have two permits we need to get. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, and I'm familiar, I did look at the store, um, because uh, I, I, I get pretty upset when I see this kind of stuff happening, and it, it came from uh, whoever did this project uh, to, to do that. Uh, and if that had been a, a legit exit door, I'd be pretty upset. But you should not, you should not ever close a door without a permit, and it has to be reviewed by the fire marshal. However, I, I know from the code, there is another fire exit at the rear of the store with an exit sign. And to be a legit second exit, it can't be that close to the primary first exit. It has to be one half the length of the diagonal of the building, and that's not. But it, you still have to get a permit to close the door. I'm not arguing that point. Okay. But, right. uh, so it looks to me that we need to get two permits, two doors. Yeah. Uh, one, I guess, for uh, that blocking of that door, and the other for the replacement of an automatic door with a manual. Okay. So, um, sir, the city has requested um, 60 days to come into compliance. You've already started the process, it looks like, of getting a permit. So um, do you have any, do you feel that that's a reasonable time as well, 60 days? How many? 60. Oh, no, I, I, think, I think 30 days would be okay. All right. Well, the city requested Oh, 60. getting a permit or applying for the permit? Getting, getting it. Getting it. Getting uh, 60 permit. days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You never know. Okay. Um, I'll have it applied for in days. Okay. So I am going to, so I, um, I find that the notice was properly given in this case. The, um, I'm admitting the case file here as exhibit A, and I also have the commercial building permit application, at least the first page of one, that is dated 1-24-23, which was yesterday. Um, I'll admit that is Exhibit B. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and make my ruling. Um, May I say something, point of clarification? I'm reading now this fire department report. This one here? Yes. Maybe you could bring it up. Down at the bottom. Exhibit one. Exhibit one, down at the bottom. 
Front entrance exit doors were originally approved to be automatic sliding doors under building permit, and it gives it. However, it has been discovered that the doors are no automatic sliding been replaced with manual swinging type doors. Please provide the city issued permit number for which the door replacement were approved under, as we cannot locate it. So that's that's the door I was talking about on the yeah. right side that was uh, replaced with the manual. I, I understand. I understand. Yeah. Um, okay. So. I am going to find the respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that the respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on March 27th, 2023, which is slightly more than, than 60 days. Um, in the event the respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $50 per day will be imposed for each day. The violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please make sure that you stay in contact with her. Um, you have the 60 days. Um, it, the, the violation just states that you need to um, obtain a permit for the replacement of the doors. Um, yeah, you must obtain a permit for entry door replacement. I believe that that's probably broad enough to cover both of those doors. So to the extent that you need to get a permit for both of them, please do so. Okay. All right, thank okay. you. Thank you, thank sir. You. Thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, the next case is 23-080-3001 Surf Drive. Officer Scott, I'm employed by the city of Deltona as Cloak Compliance Officer. This will be case DEL 23-080, the city of Deltona versus Robert C. Amon. The property address is 301 Surf Drive. Parcel ID is 81303 This is a violation of the city of Deltona Ordinance Section 3710, Public Nuisance, which states all blighted and distressed real properties are hereby declared to be public nuisance, the abatement of which pursuit to the police power uh, is hereby declared to be necessary for health, welfare, and safety of the residents of the city. Corrective action for said violation is to remove the tarp from the roof. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation was sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraisal's record. In addition, both notices were posted on the property in that city hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. This proactive case was started on April 8th, 2022 for the top on the roof. On April 14th, I issued a notice of violation and explained the corrective action to the other, other property owner who was on scene that day. On January 13th, the notice of hearing was posted on the property. I have not heard anything from the property owner regarding this matter, and as of today, the violation remains. 
The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day to be imposed until such time the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Um, okay, the note next to this says it's um, regarding the roof. Yes, ma'am. Um, so is it only the roof that yes, is the, the tarp condition? on the roof. Okay. All right. Let me um, look at the uh, case file for just a moment. a question about this code section and I um, 37-10 uh, states that all blighted and distressed real properties are hereby declared to be public nuisances there is a definition yes ma'am of blighted um, which I think this meets. Yes, number uh, six. Yes, go ahead. It was number six on the definitions. Yes. Yes. Um, and right, that states properties that have roof tarps are, or boarded windows or doors for a period in excess of 60 days. Correct. Um, I guess my question is, is because it says it is blighted and distressed, um, do we not also have to find that this is distressed as well? I'm not sure on that one. What has been the city's practice with regard to that? Um, that one I've never gotten asked, so. <laughs> you give me a minute just to look at it real quick. You're going to look minutes. at it? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to then take a five minute recess um, and we will be back at 7.50. We're back on the air? Yeah. Um, um, at this time, we will dismiss this case for now. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, the next case that I have is 22-2235. Uh, it's a Massey case for 3095 uh, Tioga Terrace. Go ahead. Okay. All right, my name is Dennis Muse. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. Uh, this is uh, Massey case number DEL 22235, the city of Deltona versus David and Suzanne Djokovic. Uh, the property address of 3095 Tioga Terrace. The par uh, parcel ID number is 81303405060. The statutory uh, requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation sent certified mail to the property owner 
at the address list with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to the hearing. All the evidence in the uh, case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special, ma special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals what I observed the day they were taken. Uh, it was ruled back on uh, August uh, 24th of 2022 that the property owner was given 90 days to comply. The owner did not come into compliance in, within those 90 days and has been receiving a fine of $100 a day since, um, since 11, uh, which should be November 22nd, 2022. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $6,500 or 6, over 65 days. But once you look at the pictures, that was pretty much uh, a total from one end of the house to the other back porch. It was an addition, okay? It's meant to go along with it all the way across. He has taken down the structure part of it, the roof, the sides. The only thing that remained was the cement, uh, as you can see there. As of today, uh, the little bit of the picture that I got of it, it was all broken up. Um, Mr. Uh, Batista has shown me the uh, photograph of his property uh, of the cement, and it is broken up. Uh, we are willing to give him 90 days to get it all cleaned up. Um, and if he doesn't get it all cleaned up in the backyard spotless, then uh, we're gonna ask for the fine to continue from tonight on. Okay. Okay, if he happens to get it done within the 90 days, all we're gonna ask for is a $250 one, one time fine. Okay, um, so you would like my order to state that it would be, um, reduced basic from to a hundred dollars a day from today going forward if he doesn't get it all cleaned up within the next 90 days okay all right is um, the property owner here? Not the property owner, uh, the, uh, I guess it would be the tenant of record. Okay. Um, Mr. Batista. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yes, go ahead, please go ahead. Can you state your name and address for the record? All right, my name is Daniel Batista, 3095 Tioga Terrace. And uh, I spoke with the supervisor and, uh, and the officer, and uh, they gave me like 90 days, and that's enough for me. Okay. All right. Um, all right. I find the notice was properly given in this case, um, and I will go ahead and make the ruling. Um, Uh, I find that respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the prior order in this case, um, and the fine will be imposed, but will only be imposed from today going forward as $100 a day um, if the property is not brought into compliance in the next 90 days. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, sir. No. All right, the next case I have is 23-027. This would be 512 East Lehigh Drive. My name is Todd Mead. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23027, the city of Deltona versus Mulcahy, Margaret. The property 
Address is 512 East Lehigh Drive, Deltona, Florida, 32738. Parcel ID number is 813-011-080-1000. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5, adopting the latest edition of the International Property Maintenance Code Section 303.2, which states that every outdoor swimming pool within the city now constructed or to be constructed in the future shall be completely surrounded by a solid or chain link type fence or wall at least four feet in height. All gates opening through such enclosures shall be equipped with a self-closing, self-latching device for keeping the gate securely closed at all times when not in actual use. Openings in a fence or enclosure shall not permit the passage of a four-inch diameter sphere. Correct the action for said violation is to provide a barrier fence or a screen enclosure. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's record. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to the hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all of the photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed in, on the day they were taken. I was follow up on a uh, reactive uh, case. This was, began as a reactive case from a resident's concern. Uh, started in May 2nd of 2022. The information was provided to the city offices about a screen enclosure damage and unsanitary pool at the address. After making contact with a homeowner and discussing the violations on the property, the time frame for compliance was expressed for safety, for safety reasons. The homeowner was able to remove the screen enclosure and place a temporary barrier around, around the pool. The homeowner was advised to make arrangements for a permanent barrier to the pool area to meet code ordinance. As of the present day, the homeowner will be placing a chain link fence around the pool to secure it, but the property is still in violation. The city would like to request 60 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $75 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. All right, and the code section that you're citing says it has to be a solid or chain link type fence or wall. Yes. At least four feet in height. Yes. All right. Um, is the property owner here? The property owner, I think, has a uh, representative for the, that's going to be putting up the chain link fence that they, they advised me of this afternoon that they were going to come in. I believe that's correct. Actually. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Mark Odorino, Pioneer Construction Company. I have been hired by the owners of the property to install a four foot high chain link fence around the pool. Okay. Um, and is the, in your view, the 60 days a reasonable time to build the fence? It should be unless I have a problem with the survey. It might, might take two months alone. I will have to get a permit. So if I need a, a survey also with the permit, then the survey is going to determine when we can start. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think if I, I'm I'm inclined to stick with the 60 days, um, and to the extent that you need an extension, um, then you know we can deal with that at the time. No problem. Uh, but I'll I'll stick with the 60 days. That's fine. Okay. Um, all right, I find that the notices were properly given in this case. I'm admitting the case file is Exhibit A, um, and I'll go ahead and make my ruling on this. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on March 27th, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $75 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please make sure you stay in contact. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, the next case is 23-017. That's uh, 1071 Cortland Boulevard. My name, is <clears throat> My name is Taylor Sukup. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a Code Compliance Officer. This will be case number DEL 23017, the City of Deltona versus Kerr Andrew O and Patricia S. The property address is 1071 Cortland Boulevard. The parcel ID number is 8130442100060. The violation of the City of Deltona Ordinance, Section uh, 38-114, which states that the furniture outside must be designated to a place outdoors or stored inside of a covered structure. In addition, the storage of the materials uh, relating to the residents' use or children's play toys, firewood, brush, logs, or any other material intended to be used in fireplaces or permitted in burning facilities shall be permitted only in the rear yard rear walls of the home the corrective action for said violation is outdoor storage must be stored properly or removed from the property the statutory for the the statutory requirements for the notification of the steering have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the uh, property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property at City Hall at least 10 days prior to the hearing. All the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case was initiated by a complaint um, on November 15th of 2022. Upon inspection, there were multiple piles of wood pallets um, and other outdoor storage in the rear yard. A verbal courtesy notice was given an additional time to come into compliance. A notice of violation was then posted to the property December 6th and sent certified mail. Regular contact has been made by the residents. As of today, the property is now in compliance, but the owner did not come into compliance by the time of the posting. We would like to um, bring this back as a, as a repeat if the violation occurs again. Um, can you, I'm, it's just difficult to see. So can you tell me a little bit about what is there in the backyard? So um, <clears throat> what you have your mouse on, that is, there's wooden pallets. Um, there was like a table out there with an umbrella, but I wasn't worried about that. It was mainly just the pallets. Like I said, this was a complaint mm -hmm. um, in regards to the pallets. So I don't know if you can see it, but right back there where your arrow is pointing, there is more pallets. Mm -hmm. You got, do you have more pictures you can scroll through? Let me see. Okay, I can see it better in the um, picture in the file. Okay, and um, I'm sorry, can you repeat the number or the time to comply and recommended um, fine? Um, this is actually in compliance. We were just bringing it here today. That way in the future, if it does come back, we can bring it as a repeat. Oh, I, I understand. Okay, so they have removed the pallets. Right, but it wasn't until after the posting date. I see. All right, so there's no fine to be imposed. Correct. Okay. All right. Uh, is the property owner here? Ma'am, um, for the uh, I want to put it on record. I did speak to the property owner, Patricia and Andrew Kerr. They were here, he wasn't feeling well. I did advise him what we, our plan was to put the property in compliance at this date, but it was in violation when we did post just in case this happens again, mm -hmm. and they were made aware of that and uh, they were okay with that. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, so I find that um, the notices were properly given in this case. Um, the case files exhibit A, and let me make the ruling. All 
All right. Um, I find that respondent in this case was in violation of the city code as charged and failed to correct the violation by the time specified for correction by the code enforcement officer and that the violation is now corrected and no fine be imposed. Any violation of the same code by respondents within five years from the date of this order shall be treated as a repeat violation for which a fine of up to $500 per day may be imposed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. The next case is 23-028, 1680 North Page Drive. My name is Todd Mead, I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This is case number DEL 23028, the City of Deltona versus Pierce Russell Kenneth and Pierce Betty Lee Jones. The property address is 1680 North Page Drive, Deltona, Florida, 32725. The parcel ID number is 813-055-280-360. This is a violation of the City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of Florida Building Code, Section 105.1, which states that any owner, authorized agent who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupants of a building or structure, or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert or, or replace any electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the ins insulation of which is regulated by this code, or to cause any such work to be done, shall first make application to the building official and obtain the required permit. Corrective action for said viola violation is to obtain the permit for a shed or remove the shed. The statutory requirements for notification for this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all of the photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. On May 9th, 2022, I observed a new shed on the property while doing a proactive review in the, of the area. A homeowner contain, uh, contacted me with receiving the door hanger notice on the violation. Homeowners scheduled the property for a survey to submit with permit application. I have co communicated with the homeowner during this inspections on the property for the fall and of the delay to obtaining the permit. As of today, there is no application for a permit. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day to be imposed with such, until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. All right, so that is a shed that you yes. are putting your cursor over? Yes. Um, and uh, will they need to obtain submit a survey for that as well? They, they had uh, apply or had gotten a survey company to come out and make the survey. There were some uh, questions on the survey that they had, uh, I guess when they had come and applied for a permit, mm -hmm. the survey company was delaying getting back to correct whatever they needed on the survey from what the homeowner shared with me. Mm -hmm. uh, and then giving through the last three months they had that there was a lot of delay on the survey company. So the homeowner has basically been at the mercy of the survey company not, not doing their, their proper okay. uh, things. All right, is the property owner here? Yes. All right, can you state your name and address for the record? My name is Betty Pierce. I live at 1680 North Page Drive in Deltona. 
and um, what he's stating is correct. We've actually paid for two surveys. Initially, we paid for one in December 2021 for $475, and it was not an accurate survey. When I received the notice, I took that down to get a permit, and when they reviewed it, it was missing crucial details. It was not to scale. It was missing a flood zone and a high water line because we live on a lake. Mm -hmm. And I then contacted the survey company for them to make corrections so then we could apply. And that process began in May. I paid them in August an additional $525 for an additional survey because they told me the high water line required an additional survey. I still have not received a hard copy of either survey. I've only received a digital copy as of Monday from the company. Um, I would love to say 30 days is reasonable, but I paid them the second survey in August. I still don't have a hard copy. Um, I did bring the digital copy in um, on Tuesday morning after I had received it for the um, city to look at it to make sure it was what was needed, and they did say that this was a correct survey, the information was correct, so I'm literally just waiting for a hard copy. Okay. Um, is the city amenable to a 60 days? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's All right. Um, did you have anything else, ma'am? No, he's okay. been a great help. Okay. It's just been hard to deal with the company. Understood. All right. Um, all right, I find that the notices were properly given in, in this case. I'm going to admit the case files, Exhibit A, um, and I'm gonna ho go ahead and make my ruling. Um, I find that respondent in this case is in violation of the city code as charged, and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on, I'm gonna say March 27th, which is a little over 60 days. Okay. March 27th, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $50 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. Respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So again, please make sure you stay in contact with the gentleman, the code, en code enforcement officer. And I do have a question, which I really hope this doesn't happen, but what if they don't give me a hard copy within 60 days? Is there anything I can do? Because this is, I feel like I have no control over what's happening. Yeah, I mean, if that happens, um, again, there could be a request for an extension. I'll have to consider that at that time. Okay. Um, like, is there any way I can, like, get them to... Well, I mean, if I, I would recommend that you explain to them that you have been now before the special I, magistrate. I, I already have. I'm sure. Okay. Um, multiple times, yeah. and unfortunately it hasn't been fruitful, other than okay. I just got an email on Monday. Okay, well hopefully, now that you have the electronic version, that, you know, it won't be, uh, it won't take that long, I hope, to get the hard copy. Okay. Um, but we would, we will have to deal with an extension if it's needed, but I think 60 days is reasonable at this point. I think it's more than reasonable, I just... So. All right. Yes, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate your help. Okay, the next case is 22-194. Uh, this is a Massey case, 1330 Howland Boulevard. Mary Laracy, I'm employed by the City of Daltona's Code Compliance Officer. 
This is a Massey case in reference to DEL 22194, City of Deltona versus Budget Pool Supply, Whiskey City Development, LLC. The property address is 1330 Howland Boulevard, Deltona, Florida. Parcel ID is 813-038-110-870. Statutory requirements for this notification have been met by notice of hearing, notice of violation, sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at the City Hall at, uh, at least 10 days prior to the hearing. All evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the Special Magistrate Clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. It was ruled on July 27th, 2022, that the property owner was given 14 days to comply. The owner did not come into compliance within those 14 days and has been receiving a fine of $50 a day since August 11th, 2022. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $8,350 over 167 days. The city is requesting that the fines continue at $50 per day until um, compliance is met. As of today, the business has not obtained a business tax receipt. Okay. Um, so in this case, um, I don't know if the city is not aware of the Attorney General opinion, 96-72, that provides that um, I am constrained in terms of issuing daily fines on a business tax receipt. Uh, it basically states that the statutory, the statutory remedy um, or penalty is all that I can do, which is a single $250 fine. Um, and that's only if you are after, if it's 150 days after the business tax receipt is due. So um, I, you know, I, I um, unfortunately can't order <laughs> or order that. Um, so do you know when, the t when it was due? I could potentially do the $250. Um, if it's been after uh, over 150 150 days since it was due, I don't know when it was due. The um, business office employee is not here. Okay, so it was turned over to me by him. Do you want to um, continue this case and then at the next uh, you can, next hearing you can bring it back with that information? And I would again suggest you look at the AGO. Um, in the interim, so that's 96-72. And the statute is um, section 205.053 uh, of the Florida statutes. Do you want me to repeat that? 205.053 of the Florida statutes. Since the okay. order. And the AGO is 96-72. All right, so we'll continue that to the next time. So, so we're going by the date that it was ruled on? We can definitely go by that date. Anything before we can prove at the moment. Okay. okay. So, I mean, we can go by the 167 days if, that's a, if we're able to do that. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear what you said. Are we able to go by the 167 days from the date the order was um, given, July 27th? Um, I think that you, I would have to, look, I think it's from the date that it was due, which presumably is well, like the, the date that you gave in the order, that's the date. Sorry, repeat that. It's the date that was in the special magistrate's first order? Correct. July 27th was the, was the order, and they were given 14 days. Okay. So it would have been from August to 11 to today, and that was 167 days. Oh, okay. Well, if you like, then I could do the $250, um, but that's, you know, that's what I'm constrained to do by statute. Okay. All right. So... Reverse course, we're not going to continue that case. <laughs> All right, so that was for 22 194. All right, so I'm going to find that. Um, in that case, respondent failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the prior order, um, and the fine will be imposed in the amount of $250. 
uh, pursuant to section 205.053 of the Florida statutes. And it, you said it was 167 days? Yes. 167 days. All right. Thank you. All right, this is 22-253, a Massey case uh, for 945 Vivian Terrace. What's the number? What was the number? Ma'am, can you repeat that case number? Yes, um, it is 22-253. Thank you. All right, go ahead. Okay. My name is Todd Mead. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This is Massey case number DEL 22253. The city of Deltona versus Mijeres, Rosalia and Menendez. Menendez. The property address is 945 Vivian Terrace, Deltona, Florida. The parcel ID number is 813-011-260-070. The statutory requirements for the notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and code notice of code violation sent in certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as ev exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. It was ruled on 8-24-2022 that the property owner was given 60 days to comply. The owner of the, did not come into compliance within, within those 60 days had, and has been receiving a fine of $50 a day since October 24th, 2022. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $4,700 over a 94 day period. The city is requesting that the fine continues at $50 per day. The city has decided to move forward with abating the property due to the public nuisance becoming an immediate health and safety matter for the general public and immediate concerns for the surrounding properties. So in this case, as, as of today, uh, photographs say that the, what was the question was a, a extension of a roof on the property without a permit. Uh, it was found that the ho homeowner was given the 60 days to get the engineer drawings and submit those to help get the permit. So that the 60 days did ex expire without any permit uh, application being in the office. That's why they were as been in violation. And as of today, I did uh, the pictures. The is half of the roof is uh, still still there. And if he goes back, uh, go back one one or two pictures from the other side that. Uh, so they either they have, due to the fact that the roof is still there, they're still in violation that we continue the uh, fine going on. Right, right there. So the initially the the further pictures of the roof was fully extended out to the past that, uh, but now it's just half halfway. So it still would be in violation without a permit. Okay, thank you. Um, is the property owner here? Yes. Yeah. Hi, can you state your name and address for the record? My name is Rosalia Mendez, and I live in 945 Vivian Terrace, Deltona, Florida. Okay. Yes, I, I, the roof is good, it's good. The 23, Dece December 23, is good. I, uh, I, I was good. I, I have a picture to the, when the, when, when cut the, the roof. Oh, the roof is cut, um, uh, one month. 
Let me ask Dan Danny. Do you think you should help, help cover a little bit with understanding the, the Espanol? Espanol. Espanol. <laughs> Yo, yo voy a traducir lo más, okay. más posible, okay? Que el techo está cortado. Se cortó el 23 de diciembre. Um, she is saying that the roof was cut um, la mitad. No, no, totalmente. Oh, porque estamos no, aquí está la foto. la foto, totalmente cortado. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, on this, ¿qué, ¿Qué fecha en diciembre? 23. On December 23rd, 2022, that the roof has been removed. Totalmente cortado. Um, I'm trying to show her the picture on the screen and it doesn't match. Yes. Let's see, can you show? Let's see what it is. Okay, so she's got separated from the house, is what we're saying. Yes. That, uh, yes. Y la otra parte es 120 pie cuadrado que tengo que sacarle el permiso para acá. ¿Esa parte? Sí, la oh, parte de ella. ¿Todavía necesitas sacar permiso? Para, para el pedazo que queda cortado. O sea, del el chet. Lo que, fe, lo que falta. Ajá, el chet. Entonces tú necesitas... Uh, that's part of the chet, she's saying. Yes. Eh, ¿Y necesitas sacar permiso? Eh, sí, porque son 120 pie cuadrado. Oh. So she's saying that she needs a permit for that. So the extension that she's showing, what she's telling me, um, that um, that's extension to the shed, which she needs a permit for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Para el shed. Para el shed, yeah. Mm-hmm. She had a but she's going to now need a, per a permit for the roof extension on the shed or the shed permit? Yes. So is uh, esa parte no es la parte de la casa? No. Okay, so she's saying that part is not part of the house. Okay, so she's sí. separated from the house. Sí, está totalmente separado. Okay. Desde el 23 de diciembre. Yo vine el 27 de diciembre a decirlo. Can I have a moment, ma'am? Yes. To speak to the officer. So, what was, so the original thing was part of the roof, right. part of the ceiling, connected to the house. She right. painted that's taken down. The only thing that's left is the extension on our shed. Yeah, that's what I, when I, I couldn't get on that property. So she's kind of in compliance, right. but we need a new case. So do that. She's in compliance now with that case. Um, there was a running fine, so let her decide on that. And we'll open up a new case for the extension on the, on the, on the shed. Okay. That's new, that we didn't cover that on the, the, the previous case, okay. right? Right. Okay. okay. All right, so on this, the case, she, she is basically, the, she had a attached the roof, so she's, uh, by her, by her pictures, what I see, she's disconnected that from attaching to the roof. Mm -hmm. So now the shed is, 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 is standing alone, but it has this extended roof on it over the shed, which she basically, she may just need a shed permit mm -hmm. that would cover, but right. that would and be a separate, wasn't, separate case. So this, in this case, she would now sort of be, be in compliance with the, the roof extension has been deleted, basically. Okay. And that's another way for her to be in and, compliance. And I, I think the testimony was she removed the roof that's part of the house on December, by December 23rd. That's correct. Uh, the portion that originally was in violation, she removed it on December 23rd. Okay. And the, but the time to comply was by October 24th. Correct? Correct. Okay, so is the city asking me to find, to impose the fine for the period between October 24th and December 23rd? Yes, and then and we, we're acceptable to a one, one time fee if it was if it was two hundred fifty dollars for the case that that would be fine. Como, como, you want to reduce say, it to two hundred and fifty dollars yes. total? Because because there was, the violation was there that we gave plenty of time, but in the fact that it's it's gone as long as she's made, uh, I know she's had to have her uh, okay. son do the work that uh, we will to do that for. Okay. Yes, All right. Okay, so, I, um, so ma'am, that's what I'm going to do. You did not come into compliance by the time that was required 
um, you would have had to pay $50 a day between October 24th and December 23rd, but the city is willing to reduce that to $250. So that's what I'm going to do. Era octubre hasta diciembre, hubiera la multa era mucho más, pero decidió una multa de 250 para todo eso. Ah, okay. ok, gracias. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm going to, so in this case, the, I find that the notices were complied with. The case file is Exhibit A, and I'm going to find that um, respondent. Um, uh, failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the special magistrate's prior order in this case. Um, however, the violation has since complied on December 23rd of 2022, um, and a fine in the amount of $250 total will be imposed, um, reducing it from the $50 a day. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is 22-211, 1567 La Villa Street. Uh, my name is Todd Mead. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This is a Massey case number DEL 22211. The city of Deltona versus BAF Assets 3 LLC. The property address is 1567 La Villa Street, Deltona, Florida 32725. The parcel ID number is 813-014-100. 120. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violations sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I preserved on the day they were taken. It was ruled on 7-27-2022 that the property owner was given 30 days to comply. The owner did not come into compliance within those 30 days and has been receiving a fine of $75 a day since 8-27-2022. As of today, the property has accrued a total of fines of $11,325 over a 151 day period. The city is requesting that the fines continue at $75 per day. The city has decided to move forward with abating the property due to the public nuisance becoming an immediate health and safety matter for the general public and immediate concerns for the surrounding properties. This case was uh, basically a, a permit for the cement parking area where the cars are sitting on now, done uh, at some time without a permit. Uh, city has had no response from the property owner of the record. Uh, so we're just continuing the, the fine as a go so they come okay. forward possibly. All right, and there's no one left in the audience, so yep, this is, uh, the property owner is not present. Not present, yes. All right, um, I'm going to, um, all right, it, the, the notices um, appear to have been properly done in this case. Um, the case file is Exhibit A. I'm gonna make the ruling. I find that respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the special magistrate's prior order in this case, and the fine will be imposed as set forth in that order and will continue to run until the property is brought into compliance 
that an affidavit of uh, compliance has been filed by the code inspector. The respondent shall notify the code inspector to verify compliance. Is there something of concern? Oh, it was a Massey case. It was already $75 per day. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, the next case is 22-227, a Massey case, 2976 Nobleton Street. Hi again. My name is Tyler Russo. I am employed by the City of Deltona as a co-compliance officer. This will be Massey case number DEL 22-227, the City of Deltona versus Jonathan and Kyle Bacallo. The property address is 2976 Nobleton Street. The parcel ID number is 813-043-310-080. The statutory requirements for this notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All this evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and have submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. It was ruled on 7-27-2022, that a property owner has, was given 30 days to comply. The owner did not, did not come into compliance within those 30 days and has been receiving a fine of $50 a day since 8-28-2022. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $7,550 over 151 days. The city is requesting that the fines continue at $50 per day. Okay, so the violation was for failure to obtain a permit. So it's your test. Is it your testimony that they have not obtained a permit at that, this time? That's correct. We don't have in our records that they've obtained a permit. Okay. All right. Can you read that please? Yeah. Uh, so it was. <clears throat> It was ruled on 7-27-2022 that the property owner was given 30 days to comply. The owner did not come into compliance within those 30 days and has been receiving a fine of $50 a day since 8-28-2022. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $7,550 over 151 days. Okay. Um, again, notice was properly given in this case and the um, case files exhibit A. I find that respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the special magistrate's prior order in this case and the fine will be imposed as set forth in that order and will continue to run until the property is brought into compliance and an affidavit of compliance has been filed by the code inspector. Respondent shall notify the code inspector to verify compliance. Thank you. All right, next case is 22-241, Massey case 541, Battersea Avenue. My name is Todd Mead. I am employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This is Massey case number DEL 22241. 
the city of Deltona versus SFRJV-HD Property, LLC. The property address is 541 Battersea Ave, Deltona, Florida, 32738. The prop parcel ID number is 813-021-080-060. Statutory requirements for notification for this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation sent certified mail to the property owner at the property address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the Special Magistrate Clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. It was ruled on August 24th, 2022, that the property owner was given 30 days to comply. The owner did not come into compliance within those 30 days and has been receiving a fine of $75 a day since September 24th of 2022. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $9,225 over a 123 day period. The city is requesting that these fines continue at $75 per day. The city has deci decided to move forward with abating the property due to the public nuisance becoming an immediate health and safety matter for the general public and immediate concerns for the surrounding properties. Okay, this is okay. Uh, so this was a also a no permit case. No permit on the on the fence. Fence was put up without a permit. Uh, did meet up with the resident one time and then tried to forward the information to the property owner to try to get it resolved, but still have no no contact as, uh, to the office or to myself to say they were getting a permit. Okay, so there's no bit permit that's been obtained at this point. No. Okay, thank you. All right, I find that the notice was properly given in this case. The file is uh, entered as Exhibit A. Um, I find the respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the special magistrate's prior order in this case, and the fine will be imposed as set forth in that order and will continue to run until the property is brought into compliance and an affidavit of compliance has been filed by the code inspector. Respondent shall notify the code inspector to verify compliance. This is 2022, uh, sorry, 22-22, sorry, 22-263, Massey case, 2923 Clovis Drive. My name is Tyler Russo. I'm employed by the city of Daytona as a co-compliance officer. This will be Massey case number DEL 22-263, the city of Deltona versus Ronald Acker. The property address is 2923 Clovis Drive. The parcel ID number is 813-041-410-050. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. It was ruled on 8-24-2022 that the property owner was given seven days to comply. The owner did not come into compliance within those seven days and has been receiving a fine of $200 a day since 9-1-2022. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $29,400 over 147 days. The city is requesting that the fines continue at $200 per day. Okay, so this was for an unsanitary pool? Yes, ma'am. And is the, these are from today? This picture is, yes. Okay. Is this the only picture from today? Yeah, I couldn't okay. get another picture. Okay. To... All right, so 
essentially because the water is still that brackish color. Yeah, it's, correct. Yeah, okay. It is still unsanitary. Okay, I find that the notices were properly given in this case. The file is Exhibit A. I find that respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the special magistrate's prior order in this case, and the fine will be imposed as set forth in that order and will continue to run until the property is brought into compliance and an affidavit, affidavit of compliance has been filed by the code inspector. Respondent shall notify the code inspector to verify compliance. Thank you. Okay, 23-010, uh, 2784 Bluestone Drive. My name is Taylor Sukup. I'm employed by the City of Dalton as a Code Compliance Officer. This will be case number DEL 23-010, the City of Daltona versus Buse Carlos. The property address is 2784 Bluestone Drive, Daltona, 32738. The parcel ID number is 81306324120. This is a city, this is a violation of the City of Daltona Ordinance Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1, which states that any owner authorized agent who intends to construct Enlarge, alter, repair, remove, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or structure um, to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, um, convert, or any place electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the installation of which regulated by the code or is to cause any such work to be done shall make application to the building official and obtain of the required permit. The corrective action for said violation is to obtain a permit. Applications must be submitted to the City of Deltona, 2345 Providence Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32725. The structure must meet all the requirements of the City Ordinance and be approved on final inspection. Contact our office with the permit number when obtained. The statutory re requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by. The notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case was initiated proactively August 1st of 2022. This case originated from a complaint for fence and disrepair. Upon inspection, repairs were done to the fence, but a permit but no permit was pulled for the repairs. A notice of violation was then posted to the property and sent certified mail, followed by a notice of hearing posted January 8th of 2023. No contact has been made by the property owner for this case. As of today, no permit has been obtained. The city would like to request 45 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $150 per day to be imposed um, until such time the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Okay, um, what is, I'm just, what is the reasoning for the $150, the recommendation? Um, because this case, um, this originated from a separate case that was for, um, it was a fence and disrepair at first. This is a completely separate case, but this has been going on for a while. Um, and the, the homeowner was known at the previous case that he needed to apply for a permit and that never happened. So we started a fresh case, um, but he's known about this for a while. But pertaining to this case, um, never mind. I'm sorry. Okay. So because it was originally in disrepair. Right, right. Okay. All right. Um, and your testimony was there's still no permit. Yeah, there's still okay. no permit. All right. 
Um, I find that the notices were properly given in this case. The case file is Exhibit A. I'm gonna find the respondent in this case is in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on March 13th, 2023. Uh, in the event respondent does not comply by this date, um, a fine in the amount of $150 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. Thank you. This is case 23-012, 1528 North Normandy Boulevard. My name is Kristen Coulter. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23-012, the City of Deltona versus Nigel Ron Tucker. The property address is 1528 North Normandy Boulevard. The parcel ID number is 8130033202260. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 38-114, which states that furniture outside must be designed to be placed outdoors or stored inside a covered structure. In addition, storage of materials relating to residential use, children's play tools, toys, firewood, brush, logs, or any other material intended to be used in fireplaces or other permitting burning facilities shall be permitted only in the rear yard to the rear wall of the home. Corrective action for said violation is to properly store or remove from the property. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by. The notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case was initiated proactively in March of 2022. Um, a door hanger was left listing violations at the property. Um, the property remained in violation and a notice of violation was posted. Contact was made with Nigel Tucker. He was a tenant at the time and violations and corrective actions were discussed again in July of 2022 and more time was extended. The property remained in violation. Contact was made again with Mr. Tucker multiple times throughout August as he was a tenant at the time and the items in violation belonged to him. The property remained in violation and the previous property owners were taken to special magistrate at that time. The property remained in violation. In October 2022, Mr. Tucker purchased the property from his landlords and he is currently the resident and the property owner. A new notice of violation and notice of hearing were posted to the property noticing Mr. Tucker as a new property owner. The property remains in violation, um, but there has been some progress made in the past few days. The driveway has been cleaned off, but items still remain on the side and rear yard. Um, the city would like to request 10 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $150 per day to be imposed until such a time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Um, okay, just, just so I understand the notice of violation, it says it was started on March 6th, 2022, but you said this was a new notice of violation. So it started... Um, back in 2022 with the previous property owners with contact being made with Mr. Tucker as the, the tenant at the time. Okay. Once he purchased the property um, later in October, we re-noticed him as the property owner, um, but he's been aware of the violation since March. Okay. Um, and can you show me, okay, these are the pictures from today? Yes. Okay, my only concern is the number of days because we you know, previously had a case where it was stated it would take quite a while for pickups, you know, so um, do you think that it would be reasonable for them to be able to clean that up in 10 days? I do, he has a truck and trailer, he does home renovations, he brings items to the property and takes items away every day, um, he's had 10 months of notice that this is an issue, um, I think 10 days is more than fair. Okay. 
And it was $150 yes. was the recommendation? All right. Um, I am, all right, the uh, notice it was correct in this case. The um, case file is Exhibit A. Clearly there's quite a bit of residential debris still on the property. Um, so I'm gonna find that the respondent in this case is in violation of the city code as charged and respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on February 4th, uh, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $150 per day will be imposed for each day. The violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. Thank you. All right, this is 23-015, 716 Mountain Way Avenue. My name is Taylor Sukup. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23-015, the city of Deltona versus Colosti Enterprise, LLC. Um, the property address is six, or 716 Mountain Way Avenue, Deltona, 32738. The parcel ID is 8130623603060. This is a violation of the City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5, adopting the latest edition of the International Property Maintenance Code, Section 302.7, which states that accessory structures, including detached garages, fences, and walls, shall be maintained, maintained and kept in good repair and sound structural condition. The prop, or corrective action for said violation is to repair or remove the structure. The statutory requirements for the notification of this hearing have been met by. The notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent to the certified mail property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's record. In addition, both notices were posted on the property at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case was initiated proactively November 14th of 2022. While addressing other violations at this address, I noticed a shed located in the rear yard in disrepair. A notice of violation was posted to the property and sent certified mail. On November 20th, the tenant at the time called in requesting more information. I called the tenant back two times to no answer or no further response. As of today, the property remains in violation. The city would like to request 10 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $250 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Okay, um, so the disrepair would be, it appears that it's off of its um, slab or base, really. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, okay, and it's, the doors appear to be falling off. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what is the reasoning for $250? Obviously that's the maximum, so. This is, a, um, this is an address that we've had lots of violations at, um, so that was the reasoning for the 250. If, I'm, I'm okay with going lower if, if that's what you want to do. Okay. Yeah, I'm not inclined to do 250 okay. for that, um, for this one violation. Um, okay. All right, the um, notice was properly given in the case. I'm entering the case files exhibit A. Um, I'm going to find that the respondent in this case is in violation of the city code as charged and respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on February 4th. 
um, in the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $100 per day. Uh, will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated stated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with the order. All right. Is there another violation on this property, 23-014? Um, this is the only one that I brought this to this special magistrate. Oh, okay. um, there was another one, but they, they came into compliance. Thank you, okay, all right. I'm just checking. All right, so this is, yes, 23-018. 2751 Summerfield Street. My name is Taylor Sukup. I'm employed by the City of Daltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23018, the City of Daltona versus Duncan Joshua. The property address is Summerfield Street. The parcel ID, ID number is 81304324006. Four zero zero six zero. This is a violation of the City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5, adopting the latest of the International Property Maintenance Code, Section 304.2, which states all exterior surfaces, including but not limited to doors, door and window frames, um, porches, trim, balconies, decks, and fences shall be kept in sound and working condition and maintained in good repair. Exterior wood surfaces other than um, decay resistant woods shall be protected from the elements and decay by painting um, other protective covering or treatment. The corrective action for said violation is to um, repair or replace the damaged exterior surfaces. In this case, it's the garage door. Um, the statutory requirements have, um, for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked and as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case was initiated proactively December 7th of 2022. Upon inspection, the garage door was boarded up with plywood and a thick plastic. A notice of violation was then posted to the property on December 7th and sent certified mail, followed by a notice of hearing posted on January 8th. Um, I have knocked on the door several times. Have, however, no contact has been made by the property owner. As of today, the property remains in violation. The city would like to request 30 days to come into compliance or a fine of $150 per day um, until such time that the property owner has been notified the city of compliance. Okay. All right, yes, the garage door appears to be in disrepair. Um, okay, the notice was properly given in this case. Um, the case files exhibit A. <clears throat> um, I am going to, and again, I, I feel 150 is a little much. I'm gonna go with 100. Okay. Um, but um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna find that the respondent in this case is in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on February 24th. That's 30 days. Um, in the event the respondent does not comply with this state, a fine in the amount of $100 per day uh, will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated stated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. Thank you. All right, this is case 23-026. Five one two East Lehigh Drive. Oh, didn't we already? This was a, uh, a lot went along with the pool enclosure that was we did earlier with O O two seven. 
But the pool, pool is the, uh, this is open for the unsanitary pool. Okay. Um, oh, this is the one where the contractor was here. Right. And right. he. He's taking care of the. He's these, taking care of the fence. The, 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 the fence outside. So in this, this case, uh, they are in compliance as of today. They came in this, this past week and got the pool uh, taken care of. So the pool is coming to compliance. We're gonna go ahead and present the case because being a pool and that the homeowner lives out of town, mm -hmm. uh, they may not be able to upkeep the pool at the time. They did, they did uh, share with me that they have a pool contractor that's gonna take care of the pool, but uh, in order to not to be a repeat case, we want to uh, go ahead and the city wants to present it and uh, have the fine just impose case the pool does come into the same conditions that it was first found at. Okay. So we'll go ahead and present the case as well. My name is Todd Mead. I'm employed at the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23026. The city of Deltona versus Margaret Mulcahy Estate. The property address is 512 East Lehigh Drive, Deltona 327. Three, eight. The parcel ID number is 813-011-080-110. This is a violation of the City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5, adopting the latest edition of International Property Maintenance Code Section 303.1, which states that swimming pools shall be maintained in a clean and, and sanitary condition and in good repair. Corrected action for said violations to have the pool be maintained and either drained of water or water must be chemically treated to remove algae water should be clear and sanitized. The statutory requirements for notification for this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at city, city Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. I was follow, following up on a reactive code case started on May 2nd, 2022. The information was provided by the city to the op city offices about a screen enclosure damaged in an unsanitary pool at this address. After making contact with the homeowner and discussing the violations on the property, the time frame for compliance was expressed for safety reasons. The home homeowner was in need of scheduling a company to clean up the pool and we gave them that, that time to find it during the uh, current uh, conditions that were going on in, this, in the area. The homeowner was advised to make arrangements for the pool area to, be, to meet uh, code ordinance. As of the present day, the homeowner has cleaned the pool and added, added the water back to the pool. The pool is, is in compliance as of today. The property at this time is in compliance, but we would like to set this case for a repeat if the violation occurs again. In that matter, the city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $75 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Okay, this picture is dated 1-4, is that right? Yeah, that last point you have to see. Is that right? It's, it's current, current. That's correct, that's January 4th. Okay, January 4th. And the time to comply was the May 12th? Yeah, or May 11th, so, all right. Um, I'm gonna find, but you're asking for no fine. No fine this time, yeah. just with the, the, if, yeah. if the fact okay. that their pool guides stop service right. and it goes green and it's notified, we're, we're made aware of that, that we can say you have, okay. a, you know, we can enact a fine. Yes, all right, well clearly the pictures demonstrate, demonstrates that as of 1-4, they had not complied because the water was um, not clear. So I'm gonna find that respondents in this case 
were in violation of the city code as charged and failed to correct the violation by the time specified for correction by code enforce the code enforcement officer that the violation is now corrected and no fine be imposed. Any violation of the same code by respondents within five years from the date of this order shall be treated as a repeat violation for which a fine of up to $500 per day may be imposed. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, this is case 23-030-2901, Howland Boulevard. My name is Dennis Muse. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer, and my credentials are on file with the city. Uh, this is case number DEL 23030, city of Deltona versus Cole FD Portfolio 3 <coughs> LLC. Uh, parcel ID number is 8130231500030. Violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code Section 105.1, which states that any owner, authorized agent who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or secure our structure, or to erect, install, and enlarge alter, repair, remove, convert, or replace any electrical, gas, uh, mechanical, or plumbing system, the installation of which is regulated by this code, or if you cause such work to be done, shall first make application to the building official and obtain the required permit. The corrective action for this uh, would be to uh, obtain a permit for the fire system cellular communicator. Um, the application be submitted to the city of Deltona uh, and the structure must meet all requirements of the city ordinance and be approved on final inspection. Uh, the statutory requirements for the notification of this hearing have been met by a notice of hearing was sent certified mail 10 days uh, prior to the hearing date and posted at the property address uh, listed with the tax collector off office. Um, the notice of hearing was also posted at city hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the code board hearing clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate uh, portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. An, an affidavit of hand delivery was uh, given to the store manager, Jack Ulrich, uh, and that was submitted. Um, it wasn't posted, it was hand delivered. Okay. Um, the facts of the case are uh, the proactive case started on uh, August 10th of 2022. I was with the Deltona Fire Inspector uh, Jory Bailey at this location for a reinspection of uh, previous cases, uh, violations. Uh, Inspector Bailey noticed the addition of the communicator that was hardwired into the fire system. Uh, I advised the si assistant manager Dixie O'Berry of the violation on uh, uh, August 24th, 22, uh, Jack Aldrich uh, stated that he had informed the corporate office of the need of, the, uh, of a permit. Uh, there was uh, an email attached to the case history um, received from the corporate that the, stated that the email, uh, the company was fully aware a permit was needed. To this uh, hearing date, uh, no permit has been obtained. And since the case, uh, this case involves the fire system, the city is asking for a fine of $250 a day to start immediately. Okay. Um, is there an area, um, I see the email it's several pages. Yeah, so I, I think it would start. Uh, let me get that page. Page three, down toward the bottom says Dan and Adam. And it looks like whatever fire installation we did requires us to go through a permitting process. We need that corrected ASAP to be compliance with local ordinances. And then on page four, uh, it basically continues with that, uh, along with another violation that was, uh, okay. that has been uh, corrected already. 
but the uh, uh, as far as the uh, this particular case um, was also mentioned over there. Okay. Um, so and but this case was started back in August. Um, Tenth. Yeah, and the compliance deadline was nine sixteen. Um, so I'm I'm not inclined to say I'm going to start it immediately, um, but I would do five days. That's fine. All right. Um, since we have gone on quite a bit of time at this point on the case. So I'm going to do, uh, so the, the um, notice was properly um, completed in this case. The case file is admitted as exhibit A. And I'm going to find that the respondent in this case is in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock PM on what is five days? January 30th. January 30th, 2023. Uh, in the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $250 per day will be imposed for each day. The violation continues past the aforestated stated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. And what I'll do is I'll try and make contact with them by way of email. Yeah. Um, to who and everybody that was on that email, if I need to. Thank you. Right, thank um, you. And for this case, um, since we're doing five days, if you can do that order draft for me first and send it to me and I can get that one done and out quickly. Understood, it'll be done tomorrow. Thank you. All right, this is case 23-041, 2831 Summerfield Street. <clears throat> My name is Tyler Russo. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a co-compliance officer. This would be case number DEL 23-041, the city of Deltona versus Bridge SFT IVC Borrower LLC. The property address is 2831 Summerfield Street. The parcel ID number is 813-043-370-080. This is a violation of a City of Altona Ordinance, Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1, which states that any owner, authorized agent who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or structure, or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert or replace any electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the installation of which is regulated by this code or to cause any such work to be done shall first make application to the building official and obtain the uh, required permit. The corrective action for said violation is to obtain a permit for the fence. Applications must be submitted to the City of Deltona 2345 Providence Boulevard, Deltona, Florida 32725. The structure must meet all requirements of city ordinance and be approved on a final inspection. Contact our office with the permit number when obtained. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. On June 23rd, 2022, this case was created due to a complaint received from a resident regarding the fence that surrounds the property. I've spoken with the tenant of the home directly about the violation that exists on the property and why I was posting the notice of violation. I also explained to the tenant that the property owner would need to apply for a permit for the fence. On July 16th, I spoke with the property manager over the phone for the first time and informed the gentleman that the property owner would need to apply for the permit for the fence so this case can come into compliance. The property manager has also been informed that they need to provide an updated survey on the property within the past 10 years in order for a permit to be issued on the property. I have been in touch with the property manager over the phone a handful amount of times about uh, where they are at the, uh, in the process of obtaining the permit. As of today, the property owner has attempted to apply for the permit 
permit, but is still in need of providing an updated survey of the property uh, for the city of Daltona to issue them a permit. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day to be imposed, imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Okay. So there was no permit that has been applied for. Well, they've applied, but they haven't fully completed the application? Yes, ma'am. They just they have to um, apply for or get a survey within the last 10 years, and they haven't done that yet. Okay. They've been informed by our office. Okay. Um, the notices were done properly in this case, and I'm admitting the exhibit or the case files, exhibit A. Um, I find the respondent in this case is in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on February 24th, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by this date, a fine in the amount of $50 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated stated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with the order. All right, this is 23-055, uh, 735 Osteen Cemetery Road. My name is Tyler Russo. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a co-compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23-055, the City of Deltona versus Andrew Grosswald. The property address is 735 Osteen Cemetery Road. The parcel ID number is 823-100-0098. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 66-19-3, which states that boats, trailers, recreational vehicles shall not be parked or stored either within the public right of way or within the portion of the lot lying across the full width of a lot between the front line and frontmost part of the principal structure. The corrective action for said violation is to park the RV on the side of the house behind the face front or in the rear yard, but not within the side street. Please move the vehicle to a proper parking area or remove from the property. All vehicles must have a current tag and be operable or they must be stored in an enclosed garage. The statutory requirements for this notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. On October 28th, 2022, this case was created due to a complaint. The day that I went out to the property, I noticed there was a boat and an RV that was improperly parked on the property. I spoke with a person at the gated entrance who was a friend of the residence and I informed them, informed them to please relay my message and to give them the door hanger that stated what the violation was and how to correct it. Since this last conversation with the friend of the resident, the property has uh, properly parked the boat but has not done so with the RV. I have yet to make contact after the last conversation on November 2nd and as of today the RV is still improperly parked. The city would like to request seven days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day to be imposed on the property until the owner has notified the city of compliance. Did you say 50? 50, yes ma'am. Okay. All right, um, I find that the notices were properly given in this case. Uh, the case file is exhibit A, and um, I find the respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged, and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on, what is seven days? On February 1st. In the event a uh, respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $50 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated stated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. Thank you. All right. 
This is 23-079. One zero four eight Pioneer Road. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. My name is Nelson Nieves, and I am employed by the City of Deltona as a Code Compliance Officer. This will be case number DEL twenty three zero seven nine, the City of Deltona versus Brian William and Vanessa L. Fontes Olivares. The property address is ten forty eight Pioneer Drive, Deltona, Florida. 32725. The parcel ID is 813-005-580-120. This is a violation of the City of Deltona Ordinance Section 66-193, which states that boats, trailers, recreational vehicles shall not be parked or stored either within a public right-of-way or within that portion of the lot lying across the full width of the lot between the front line and the frontmost part of the principal structure. Corrective action for said violation is to park boat, trailer, RV on the side of the home, side of the house, behind the front face or in the rear yard, but not within the side street yard. Please move the vehicle to proper parking area or remove from the property. All vehicles must have a current tag and be operable or they must be stored in an enclosed structure. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed above with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This is a reactive case that was opened on November 30th, 2022. When I had arrived to the property that day, I did observe a trailer in the driveway and I had posted a notice of violation on the property due to there already being case history for that same violation. I made contact with the resident and informed them of the corrective action. And the resident stated that they were in the process of cleaning and replacing the interior of the trailer. I then proceeded to document the trailer in the driveway and on the 7th of January, I had posted the notice of hearing. I made contact with the resident again, informing them of the special magistrate hearing and filled out the affidavit of, affidavit of service. On the 19th, I had received an email from the resident informing me that the trailer had been removed from the driveway. I was able to drive by the property and verify that it was in compliance. At this day and time, I would like to note that the property remains in compliance, but was not in compliance at the time of posting. So the city would like to bring this case back as a repeat if the violation were to recur again. Okay. There's no exception in the uh, in the code. I don't believe. I don't see it um, for cleaning, right? Oh, it says they may be temporarily parked in the driveway on the lot where they're lo located for a maximum of two days in a seven-day period. So this yes, has been well. That was well beyond the two yes, days. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so. The no, I find that the notices were properly provided in this case, and the case files exhibit A. I find respondent in this case was in violation of the city code as charged, that the violation uh, was corrected and Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing. I find that um, respondent in this case was in violation of the city code as charged and failed to correct the violation by the time specified for correction by the code enforcement officer that the violation is now corrected and no fine imposed. Any violation of the same code by the respondent within five years from the date of this order shall be treated as a repeat violation for which a fine of up to $500 per day may be imposed. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so, uh, 
anything else for the good of the order, we will, we will adjourn. Thank you.